Welcome to the Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere, and there's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Also, below this video, you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy, and this is of particular note if you drive an electric vehicle. Speaking of Patreons, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon, so a massive shout out of thanks and appreciation to Rob H., Ben White, Maximum Gravy, Austin Whitsitt, John Kays, Julian Jeremiah, Tommy Swagnett, Michael Kahn, Patrick Gunnels, Banter, Will Brax, Mel B. Styles, Troy Shuker, Bose Nail, Samson, Maris, Harry Blade, Mobile Max 777, Neo the One, Lost Cat FE, Rob W, Open Minded, Reese Pound, Del West Watson, Mike, Muted, Dick Earth Skeptic, Maria Neelands, Unbelievable Productions, Blue Ridge Ranger, The Real Gabster, Liam Nedrick Jr., Abraham Mohammed, Adrian Quintana, Skeptic936, Life is Short, TheFlatEarthChannel.com, Texas Mike, and David Wayne Foster. So another massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now I will hand over to whoever is in Discord and Google so you can enjoy their dulcet tones while I set up for today's live show. Hello, can you guys hear me? Good afternoon, Nick, then. Hey, Jorge, thank you. Forgot to turn my amps on. I thought I'd got a technical issue. I'd just forgotten to turn something on. Were you hustling Kevin to say hello? That's what the first thing I heard when my amps clicked on. He's not muted, right? See? Probably. I've only just got here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. Yes, he was. <laughs> hey, Kevin. Can you hear us? Yeah. How you doing, Nathan? Very well, very well. There you go, guys. Now you can talk to him. My bad. I've only just got here. Thanks for the... Thank Thanks for the welcome. Appreciate it. <laughs> no worries. I, I, I'm doing stuff at the minute, so just ignore me. But they all wanted to talk to you, and I don't know, I've only just got here, so I don't know what's going on. So, Kevin B, what's up, bro? Hey, just getting something? ready. To... No, I uh, definitely not a glober. Not a glober. No, that nonsense left me a long time ago. Good for you. Hey, you got a good name. I like that name, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. I'm uh I'm of uh unlike Nathan who has several different ethnicities. <laughs> I'm mostly Italian, so uh I got an Irish name which totally makes sense and Brian's logic would probably love that. Irish and Italian. Uh, Irish. Of course you are. Well, aren't, aren't you aren't, aren't you a sliver uh black as well, Nathan? Did I hear that support? More than a sliver, I love you, you know. I'm also mostly Italian, and my name is Kevin, from the Irish side. <laughs> ah, well done. Funny. Well done. You it's know the rules. The truth. Only one Irish guest at a time. We don't want chaos. I'm mostly Italian, so it's all good. Yeah, yeah, mostly Italian. I, I have no Irish. It, my dad, uh, my dad just didn't want me to have an Italian name because he got picked on when he when he came here from Italy, which is kind of weird. Because I'm not sure the Irish were picked on any less, but. From the history we're told, it seems like they were picked on more. That's okay. for sure. 
Your entire country was founded on immigration, and yet you're all at each other's throats. <laughs> Amazing. Imagine that, right? I know. I think Neil may also be Italian. I'm not sure. Something gives me that feeling. I thought he was German. Is he not German? I don't know. I don't, I, I'm thinking Neil's Italian. It's my guess, anyway. I could be wrong. I think you're wrong. Damn, I'm a... Yeah, I think Neil's Italian, too. Was it you I heard on 24-7 Discord harp this morning? You're talking to me? No, I, I was going 24 7. I was having it out with a, a globe believer about Coriolis deflection. The you, Stag? It was somebody f that comes here regularly. I just can't remember who it was. I'll have to go back and have a look. As I listened to the discussion, the re it doesn't really matter who's in the discussion. What, what I noticed was the repositioning of where the claim is being observed from took place two three four times so i'm going to do this in the live show when we come to ask for axial rotation but i'm going to go through it and try and make it as clear as possible it's not a clear subject so arguing about it the main debating points were being won by the flat earth side but there was just like i say one integral detail that kept getting stepped over or not recognized, which is to say that Coriolis effect is only observable from the turning reference frame. So if you're describing Coriolis effect, it's got to be t described from a roundabout. That would be you seeing something seem to happen from a roundabout. So in the discussion, there is a constant switch from what's happening in terms of what you observe, that's Coriolis effect from the roundabout, and what the plane, bullet, hot air balloon, what they're doing. Now, the projectiles got a description in Coriolis because it's got a trajectory. But what's being described by the effect isn't that trajectory. It's the apparent trajectory that you see happen. So, in Coriolis effect, your drone takes off, off a roundabout and just hovers. So, for the sake of simplicity, it's not going anywhere. It's just hovering. But from your vantage point... Looking at it, experiencing Coriolis, it looks like it's coming towards you and going away. Coming towards you, going away. That not actual path that the drone takes is is the description of Coriolis. And that can only, will only ever be described from the roundabout in that example. Now in the discussion it's constantly, well on the drone, well if I've got somebody inside the drone or inside the aeroplane or I've got a camera on the drone or in the drone, that's how it constantly seemed to move in terms of, well what are you going to describe then? What about if the bullet's moving across a very long uh, area over a very significantly extended period of time. What about the deflection it takes then? It's like, well, it doesn't. You know, this, this description of what the bullet's going to do is kind of irrelevant. Yes, it may have a trajectory, but what's going to be described in Coriolis effect is the curved path you appear to have presented with you when you watch it from a turning reference frame. And every single time that at least for me, when my opponent says, well, if you stick a camera on the drone, then you're not, my answer is you're not describing Coriolis anymore then. You know, at which point they've got to try and say, well, I'm not trying to describe Coriolis. You're the one describing Coriolis. No, I'm not. I'm detailing what your claim is on the globe Earth with Coriolis, which will only ever be described from the ground. Never from the plane, never from the helicopter, never from the hot air balloon. Always from the ground. What appears to happen to the balloon, what appears to happen to the bullet, what appears to happen to the drone, what appears to happen to the gyroscope, what appears to happen to the pendulum, and what they claim appears to happen to the sun and celestial bodies above our heads. So that is an apparent motion caused by you turning beneath it according to all of those as claimed on the sphere. Now in reality, you only ever see this effect if you're on a spinning surface which globe earth is not we don't have a globe earth we're definitely not spinning or we'd observe the effect they claim we see and we would see the effect they claim 
we would see. That is to say, it's not going to be described from a guy on the drone or a guy on the hot air balloon or a guy on the plane or from the bullet's perspective, ever. It's just you looking at something, travel through the air if it's got a direction of travel and seeming to do something it isn't, seeming to curve when it isn't because you're turning beneath it. So, the effect's never going to be detailed from the inertial reference frame. That is from the bullet's perspective, from the drone's perspective, from the hot air balloon's perspective, from the plane's perspective, from the gyro compass's perspective, from the pendulum's perspective. None of these things are ever applicable to Coriolis deflection because that deflection is something that can only be described from your eyes on the ground spinning beneath things. That's it. Hey, Nathan, good morning. Yeah, that wasn't me. I wouldn't fall for that trick. <laughs> No, I, I just, just it was a regular panel member and I couldn't remember who it was. I'll go back and I'll look after the fact and see who it was so I can just say to them, you know, you're doing a really good job because you're winning. So don't take this as a criticism because every point that's being brought up, regardless of which frame of reference it's being described from when it's changed by the Fundy Globe Believer, you're still winning the point. So it's not a criticism. More power to you. You know the, all of the arguments. But it must be stressed that when the changeover happens from the frame of reference that's spinning and you observing things from it to the projectile it's it wasn't picked up on it wasn't pointed out why are we describing this projectile now why why are we describing how the motion of the projectile is in any way even capable of being described when you're talking about a not actual deflection an illusion of a deflection the only motion being the claim that we're turning underneath stuff on a globe earth or you actually turning underneath stuff if you're on a roundabout So I've been told that they call that uh, relative motion. When you're talking about that roundabout. So I'm just looking up this. I did this before. but So the Coriolis effect has like two different uh, definitions. The deflection of an object due to the Coriolis force is called the Coriolis effect. Though recognized previously by others, the mathematical expression for the Coriolis force appeared in an 1835 paper by French scientist Gaspard Gustave de Coriolis in connection with the theory of water wheels. Now then when you go over and look at Coriolis force, it says in physics, the Coriolis force is an inertial or fictitious force that acts on objects that are in motion within a frame of reference that rotates with respect to an inertial frame. See, so you're saying that this has to be in motion. So hovering a anything no, 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 over no. a roundabout or whatever, mm -hmm. they that call is... that relative motion. Well, the relative motion is as they're described accurately. Everything so far is correct in terms of the way it's been described. So the relative motion I described two or three days ago on a, a guy on a crane. I don't know if you were around when I gave that description. Well, the crane operator moves the stick and starts to spin on an axis on the crane. And... As he does so, he looks out the window, forgetting that it's him making the crane move with his little stick, and he goes, oh my God, there's a building coming towards me. The building's coming to get me. And oh my God, bang, he hits the building. Yeah? Well, that's the Coriolis force in action. It was an apparent force that moved the building towards him. It wasn't actually moving towards him. It was completely stationary. But the net effect of what he observed and what he put in the accident report was the building came to get me. It was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and then I hit it because it was coming towards me. When in reality, he rotated about his axis, went too far and hit the building behind him. Well, that is not an actual force, but it is most definitely the Coriolis force when you describe the building coming towards you if you're the crane operator. Because it's his description of a not actual force. How did they describe it? A fictitious force. That fictitious force moved the building. What you're not going to be describing is the force of the crane in a not actual terminology. If you're watching the crane come to you and you're in one of those high-rise buildings standing in the window watching a crane come towards you. right? That's an actual 
actual rotation of the crane towards your position. The actual force of the crane destroyed the building. When you look at it from that vantage point in the inertial reference frame. So from the inertial reference frame, if you're going to describe Coriolis and say, well, let's now move this to our eyeballs where we're not experiencing the effect. Well, then there is no Coriolis effect anymore because it was a not actual deflection. All you've got is the actual effect of the crane swinging towards the building. And in translation to Coriolis deflection from a roundabout, you could have a limb of a tree hanging over the roundabout. And you sit on the roundabout, close your eyes, don't realise that someone spins the roundabout. You open your eyes. Oh, my God, the tree's coming to get me. Bang. You hit the tree. Well, that was the tree coming towards you as you just didn't do anything. You weren't moving. You weren't running towards it. You were just, as far as you were concerned, non-inertial. Not moving from your vantage point. You're sat perfectly still, not doing anything. But yet the tree's still coming towards you with an inertial force. No, you're the one with the inertial actual force. But in terms of the description of the tree branch coming towards you, it's a description of a fictitious force that brings the tree towards you. I'm trying to get one, trying to get a demo out here to, to define uh, relative motion. Because him and Puppy both tell me it's different from Coriolis. I'd like to hear them tell you that I, I've never heard that conversation. I've never heard him, them say to you that's relative motion. But when I asked them the question of, of the roundabout, that's what I got, relative motion. You can describe it in that way, but it is actually defined as the Coriolis effect. If you want to say the well, relative see, that's motion. What I thought. The relative motion. That's what I thought. I look, I'm sorry. Cause, I, cause I, just I, say that. I looked it up and I'm thinking, wait, this is just another way to say Coriolis. But by not saying it, they're just. Yeah. You know, they're they don't want to say it. They don't want to say it because they haven't got it. They don't have Earth-based Coriolis effect to show you. So they don't want to say it. And when you detail what is actually Coriolis effect, they want to segue away from the claim the globe has, which is Coriolis effect, and say that's just relative motion. Yet the motion of the tree relative to you spinning. But from your vantage point, non-inertial, not moving, it looks like the tree comes towards you. It's just it's relative motion to your spin direction. Yeah, that would be Coriolis deflection if you're describing the tree coming to get you and not actual force of a tree coming towards you. You spinning towards it, but because you're not moving, you're non-inertial. To have the effect, the force of the tree described, you must be in a non-inertial frame of reference. That is to say, from your point of view, you're not the one moving. Hence the term non-inertial reference frame, even though it's spinning. That makes no sense, right? It's spinning. No, because the effect that's going to be described is described as you don't move. You're just sitting there, not doing a thing, and suddenly a tree's coming towards you. That's the force when describing Coriolis. The force of the tree coming to get you. An illusion of a tree coming to get you. Because you're actually... Not that you're going to recognise this when you describe the tree coming to you. You're actually rotating towards it. Now, that is the claim. That's Coriolis. So, therefore, drone takes off and we should rotate towards it on a spinning Earth. That's it. That's the claim. We don't. That doesn't happen. doesn't happen on Earth because we're not spinning. If we were, it would. It isn't. It's also a claim that should happen because they say it should happen. They tell us we should see Coriolis deflection. We don't. So, then they get into segueing away from Coriolis and telling us that we're the ones claiming it. Last guy that's going to get published tonight from final section of that guy who wanted Bitcoin is exactly that. At one stage, he says, I'm not claiming Coriolis. You are. That's what he tells me. Because I've detailed what the globe claims. So therefore, because they can't show it and it doesn't happen, they have to make it our claim and pull apart how we claim Coriolis deflection should occur on a globe Earth. No, no, we're not claiming that. We're debunking it. But if they can make it our claim, they can then argue amongst themselves about the begging the question assumption of Earth turning with anything they describe and the not effect that they're supposed to have on the globe, which is Coriolis. They'll say, no, I'm not claiming that. You are flat earther. Why would I be claiming Coriolis? I don't claim Earth spins, but they need me to because it doesn't actually happen. So they can defend it not happening as though I'm claiming it. Hello, Nathan. 
Hey, I went. Why weren't you live? Missed your show today. Bit upset. Yeah, we're missing your show. Oh yeah, it's two minutes past. <laughs> too, too into talking about Coriolis deflection. <laughs> no, I'm He's... talking about a panel link. Where's the panel link? Send the I... link. Oh, I've not sent the panel link out. Oh, I, I posted know, it. You okay, 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 I pasted <laughs> it. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. I pasted it. I just didn't send it. There we go. Done. It's in Ballbusters and Master B. Oh, I better not go live because otherwise I'm going to get half a dozen people trying to pile into the hangout while I do. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, ding dongs. All right, let's get them all out of the way. We're going to be slightly late live. I blame Arwin. <laughs> we thought you were going to skip out on today's show. No, no. No, not at all. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, how dare you, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live, and there's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Also, below this video, you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy, and this is of particular note if you drive an electric vehicle. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. One last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Arwin, Neil, Tenth Man, John and a whole bunch of people in Discord. So welcome one and all. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Morning. Hey, hey, good morning. Hey, good afternoon. Good morning. Uh, we're going to go through the housekeeping, but I'm going to take it upon myself to pause when we get to the axial rotation question mainly because of a conversation i was listening to just before the show started or maybe an hour or two before the show started on flat earth 24 7 discord um but we'll go through the housekeeping anyway so i'll leave uh, axial rotation to last any evidence of a physical geometric sphere edge horizon formerly known as the curve of the earth it exists in the math black swan Right on. The question is any evidence. Existing in the math is not evidence. I'll assume everyone's off muting Discord as righteous forces in there. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? Well, I don't know if anybody saw. Shout out to Bev, try thinking, but I watched a four hour marathon a couple nights ago and there was a baller in there that. I think was attempting to straw man that question, Nathan, on uh, using trigonometry and the sextant and using a right angle and then the angle to the uh, to the uh, sun in two different spots, claiming that uh, the sun was 3,000 kilometers in one location and a little over 2,000 kilometers in another. Not sure quite what he was getting at, but 
glad to see the Globers aren't claiming 93 million miles anymore. Well, if they're going to do that triangulation to get a height to then insert R and extend the distance out to 93 million miles, they're going to follow the same process. And check out Red Rhetoric video if you want to see how they do it, or Smokescreen Designs debunking of it, where he just points out that they do this and then just insert R to give you the distance. Well, they're going to need R for that first and foremost, but where do they get a straight line to perform triangulation on a sphere? Oh yeah, well the claim was he was doing it on a flat Earth. Uh, why? I think to straw man it, to, because the claim was you have different heights, different elevations to the sun in two different locations at the same time claimed, at the same time of year, same time of day, and uh, and therefore that can't be. The sun has to be at the same elevation in both locations, so therefore the flat Earth can't, can't be uh, proven. Why does it have to be in the same height at those two different locations? That was a really good question. Yeah. Do I don't think have... anybody uh, was challenging and brought that up. But Just one, just one second. Yeah, that would just, have been just, one, just one more thing. Just one more thing. Did he actually show this triangulation being done? Or was it just an assertion that he made? Well, he showed it in Muppet Vision and then made, and then I, made I, a claim I, that... Hold on, he, hold on. He was... Uh, no, no, no. no. Not, made, not a claim that he's been made. Did, did anybody actually do this triangulation with the sun at any stage? He claimed he, he claimed that he did using a sextant. Did he, he have two different was, two different? Hold on, I said hold on just one second. He said he had two different locations. How could he be in two different places at once? I don't follow. Well, he was uh, at his hometown. He claimed for one, and then he took a vacation to Rome, I guess, and uh, at the same time of year, uh, and the same day time of day. And took a uh, took a reading with the sextant there as well. This is a year apart. It was a bizarre claim. It is a bizarre claim. Yeah, bizarre, bizarre claim. But it was not being held up in terms of how this would be done on a sphere to prove a sphere. It was being done as a, a straw man in terms of how he says it can't work on a flat Earth because he's claiming that there's two different altitudes to the sun as a physical object when measured at these two different locations yeah. using a tool that can only work on a flat surface anyway. Exactly. I see. Sounds like a lot like uh, Eratosthenes. Yeah, he'll need R. He assumed a sphere. Yeah. Uh, second, since you were on the show, did he give any indication that the sunlight was coming in parallel or divergent? No, that didn't come, come up at all. The, the sun yeah, was just well, the sun to this, to this person, I guess. Yeah, well, the angle of the sun changes, as we know, because it moves over our flat plane. So you're going to have a different angle from different locations, obviously. But their model says the sun ray comes in parallel, so they got a problem because it's divergent. Yeah, and then why is he using angles in relation to the horizon? He should know that's, you know, that's not geometric. Like, what, what is he using to measure it against? He's, he, he can because he's saying he's doing it on a flat plane and taking geometric measurements. So he's affirming that this tool can only work on a flat Earth in his straw man that he builds up in terms of the distance to the sun. But to take the measurement, he's got to assume a flat plane and it all works out and he's done his triangulation. Any more on this? If not, we'll move on. Go on, whoever that was. I was just about to say that's just incoherent. I don't even see how you how you can even make that into a, a claim for the globe. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. He's it's saying, not... John, he's he's saying, if I'm getting it right, that on the flat plane, when you shoot the sun from his hometown, wait one year, go to Rome obviously some distance away from his hometown, much like Cyan and Alexandria, like Eratosthenes, and he shoots the sun on the same day, but a, a following year. Number one, this takes great planning. I'd like to know if he ever did it. But assuming he did, what does that prove? That the sun is at a different angle to Rome than it is to his town because of where it is in the sky? I, mean, it's, I, I don't get it. Did he say it's a different height? 
So it would be at a different height because it's a different place. No, he's in a different place with a different angle. That's the what he's not realizing. But you've hit the nail on the head. What does it prove? Okay, so you're saying that if you measure the sun on a flat plane, it's very difficult to triangulate with a not actual object that's moving. Um, we don't know what it is. Yeah, that that we would all concede to. So saying I can't triangulate with the sun and get an accurate distance to it. Mm, yeah, I'd agree. Wowie, what does that prove? Yeah, that's my point. Like, that's the dumbest thing I've, like, as far as a claim to debunk flat Earth, that might be the dumbest claim I've ever heard. Unless there's someone on the panel saying that it's 3,000 kilometers above the red or something, or wherever they claim on a flat Earth when they're using some nonsense from whoever they've got it from. Well, you don't even have to say that. What he's doing is he... Sh for example, let's say you're just at the seashore there where you live in England somewhere and you shoot the sun when it's, uh, you know, rising uh, from the east, let's say 20 degrees in the sky. And then you wait till it's 20 degrees just before it sets or, I mean, it's going to be a different place because it's moving in relationship to you on the flat plane using the horizon. What does that prove? So he saw the star from the seashore. You, you, shoot, you see the sun, you gain an angle to it, say 20 degrees above the horizon as it's uh, day, you know, daytime. And then you wait and say it's you know, 12 noon. Now it's directly over your head somewhere. So he didn't see a star at the proof? seashore. He saw the sun at the seashore. Yeah, yeah. I've not, I'm using the sun all the time here. So you see the sun and then you see it directly overhead. What does that prove about what you live on? You've got the automatic assumption of a flat plane when you do the triangulation in the first place. So you say, what does it prove? Well, you're not proving anything. You're utilising a principle of the geometry of the surface that you're standing on in order to make the measurement in the first place. So it's not really proving it. It's, it's utilising the flat plane, right? Right. Well, that's my point. If he says he's using a sextant and he shoots at 20 degrees above the horizon as it's uh, rising and then it's 12 noon, he just proved that he's using a flat plane to get the angle. Yeah, exactly. Very interesting. Let's move on. Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? No. Uh, no, that's ridiculous. And good morning. Hello, Chocolate. Hey, Chocolate. And hello, Arwen. Good to have you back, by the way. Yes. Thank you. It's good to be back. What's up, well, man? You were missed. I'm sure you'll be pleased to hear. I have heard. I have still listened like, to the show in the background, but I just chose not to get involved, even in the comments. That's fair enough. They will shout the things long behind us now, so hopefully we won't fall uh, out over it. I, Very good news by your... actually. Sorry. I was just going to say a bit wise move on your part. Why fall out over it if there's a, something that's not pertinent to the discussion so much that it needs falling out over? Just remove yourself if it's awkward or whatever. Very wise on your part, I thought. Right. And it, it was also just a, a demonstration. Like, I was boycotting, like, over personal reasons as well. And it was, like, the season had just hit me. Right, so I've been like sort of half sick this last week. Not like really sick or the flu or anything, just a little feeble. Hey, you guys know me for years now. I pretty much have this every year. And I even talk about it every time it happens. So it kind of all came at the same time. And I needed a bit of time off. But uh, funnily enough, actually, after the after shows were over, I've been hanging around in Discord. <laughs> like... Uh, after the after show is done and been having a couple of great conversations in the last few days with the discord panelists it was very interesting good conversations good stuff any scientific evidence of gravity while you were having those conversations uh, the... yeah, uh, that about lots sums fancy it up. words lots of fancy words to dress it up with to suggest there's something scientific about it, but when push comes to shove, when 
you really demand the actual evidence, then it's kind of abandoned. Like, uh, yeah, there should be. Incoherent. But what is it? Hmm. Go ahead, whoever that was. George, I think. Or Jorge, I should say. Yeah, I was just saying it, it's incoherent. What's incoherent? Gravity? Now, what they uh, propose instead of gravity? Ether. Oh, right. incoherent. Hey, Brian. Yeah. Oh, I haven't got time. I've got to be honest, Jorge. If people want to believe in incoherent dielectric and magnetism or whatever, then more power to them, right? Long may their investigation continue. Hopefully it will prove fruitful in the end. But me, I see the bigger, wider problem as the almost entire Western world believing that they've got a force called gravity. So, you know, Bigfoot believers, same thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? More power to you. Don't really care. What? No way. There's much more chance that Bigfoot is actually based on a real thing. And gravity isn't. Like, it just isn't. It's an aberration. That's what my conclusion was out of the original gravity versus relative density debate that was years ago with Tony. And I still stand behind that. It's just super suggestive. It's a handful of elements, traits that we perceive in, in this realm. And they've been gathered up and unified under a banner of gravity. But there is really no coherence to it. So when sure. you really try to point it, pin it down, it all falls apart every time. 100% agree. But with the juxtaposition isn't between gravity and Bigfoot. It's between incoherent dielectric magnetism and Bigfoot. And I'm saying in both instances, more power to you. So the answer is no, there is no scientific proof of gravity. By any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics. No, no, and no. I do my best to come up with stuff, but I know where it'll lead. <laughs> so do they. It would be hard I'm to do without R for them, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm still the most fascinated by the entire concept and the consequences suggested of the assumption of the existence of black holes and what that would do. I'm still fascinated like how far they went with the imaginings of that and how they've been able to basically portray that in sci-fi movies and keep it pretty consistent, right? But it is pure fiction. It is absolute pure fiction. But still fascinates me <laughs> well the hobbit movies had some consistency so they can make it up as they go too yeah but that's actually based on a real story yes yeah, so is black holes it's guesswork <sighs> okay as it was mentioned by john any evidence of the r value black swan black swan <laughs> Might as well. I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> well, I'll give it a quick rendition. If the Earth was a sphere with a radius of 3959 miles, then every distance to horizon, that would be the physical geometric sphere edge Earth curve horizon, could be no more than 1.2 times the square root of the observer's height in feet, as per the Earth curve mathematics. The distance to the horizon in the black swan is beyond the geometric limitations of a sphere radius 3959. Therefore, the Earth is not a sphere, and the horizon is not Earth curve. But is but, it in pseudo-Ramonian force though. space? It aren't straight lines in pseudo-Ramonian force space, aren't they circles? Isn't a flat plane in pseudo-Ramonian force space actually a sphere, mathematically? Straight lines are geodesic bent line, yeah, but that's in fourth dimensional space-time that doesn't exist, it only exists in maths. So how bent lines can be geodesics is irrelevant in reality. Fascinating though it may be in mathematics. And confusing. But, Somebody asked something from but, Discord just before you said that. Do you want to repeat it, whoever it was? Truth seeker, go ahead. No, nah, no, nah, I was, I was trying to, trying to play the ball win role. But, but what about refraction, though? Their refraction requires an R value. So when a baller says refraction, 
They don't need to overtly state that they're begging the question because they will at some stage mention the atmosphere. That would be the sphere-shaped air that we don't have. There is no such thing as sphere-shaped air. Air gases take the shape of their container. So the automatic assumption that air is in a sphere shape around an automatically assumed to be spherical Earth is an assumption that violates several natural laws. So no, we don't have air that's sphere shaped and their atmospheric refraction, otherwise known as terrestrial refraction, also described as standard refraction, is based on an R value. And that R value must be derived by a geometric measurement and if they're claiming it's refracted, it leaves them paradoxically without a straight line to acquire the R value. They're claiming refracts the very horizon they measured the R value with to a different location with an R value they can't acquire. Hence paradoxical. Arwinian paradox that got labelled. I don't find the math fascinating. I find it very deceiving. Well, math can be as helpful or deceiving as it is designed to be. It's describing. It's just descriptions. Maths is just a language. It's an attempt to describe the heavens, which I see as pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> now I look back on this... it. Now I look back on it. What are they describing? They're trying to describe heaven with their maths. <laughs> but this kind of math divides much. us. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was too bad. <laughs> How you doing, Chaco? Yeah, brother. Any evidence? Was boycotting too? Uh, let's just get through housekeeping. We're nearly there. No. Last question. Any evidence of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? Oh no, there is a, one other question. We'll we'll cover that as well. What axis? No. I don't know if I'm going to repeat myself. You're going to need R for that. You are going to need R for that, but. In terms of Coriolis deflection, which is the globe claim, I want to make it clear to anybody arguing that the moment your opponent on the globe side suggests a trajectory description, you're in a position where you are then violating what Coriolis is because it can only be described from a turning reference frame as you view things as you turn. In other words, it's the okey-doke. You're automatically talking about the projectile and not where you're observing the supposed Coriolis force from, which is the non-inertial spinning reference frame, a.k.a. the supposed globe Earth. Right. Coriolis effect... So so sorry. Coriolis effect is actually the globe Earth's worst enemy. They're just not willing to recognize it. Because it's the physical, real-world consequences of actual motion in relation to non-motion... And yeah, guess what? Their spinning ball has this rotatory motion and it has consequences and they don't want to know it. And when I agree with all I, I always said they never thought it through. Well, when you combine the sun and Coriolis, they're really dead. Because what the sun is, is their Earth-based Coriolis if they want to go there. But then you'll say, fine, that's in the initial reference frame. So what about the hot air balloon airplane? Uh-oh. Imagine having to defend something that's claimed by your side that absolutely must be apparent, aka actually be seen, um, and uh, it's never seen. <laughs> well, by the well, fact you go on a roundabout and do it. By the fact that the sun is moving over us and not the Earth, is what they demonstrate at the end with that flawed argument. Because if the Earth was spinning, then not only the sun would validate it, but airplanes and hot air balloons and everything else would. Since they don't, we know the Earth is not spinning, and it's the sun that's moving. Right. And the way it would validate it is from your position on the ground, watching any of those items, you'd see them take an apparent curved path because you're claimed to be spinning underneath them. It's the only way to observe the Coriolis deflection. It cannot be described any other way. It's the apparent motion that you observe as you turn beneath stuff. So if there is no deflection, that would be no apparent curved path in aeroplanes, hot air balloons, drones, or anything else that isn't attached to a spinning reference frame as claimed by the globe. 
then there's no effect to see. There's no Coriolis effect to observe. Now, that's what we point out daily. And the response we get from anti-flat earthers is, you're claiming Coriolis effect then. No, we're not. No, you are. We're ripping it to shreds by pointing out we don't observe that effect. We're not observing anything drift away from us. That doesn't happen. So they launch into defending why it doesn't happen. Well, the claim proof we spin is that it does happen. So their defence of why it doesn't happen always starts with the projectile's motion. So they'll start detailing why the plane isn't deflecting and how it's got engines and is travelling in this way or that way or across these, that, the other latitude lines makes no difference because the effect can only be described as you observing it from the ground. That's what Coriolis is. So for Earth to have this effect, you've got to be on the ground spinning beneath things. We're not on the ground spinning beneath things as the claim the globe makes states. So we're not seeing the effect. We're not turning beneath things. And if we were, we'd see that because that's what it's described as being as the effect. Us seeing things drift because we're turning beneath them. So we better see things drifting because we're turning beneath them then. If we're on a turning Earth, oh, we don't ever see that. No, we don't. That's the bottom line. We don't see the effect the globe claims. And all the defence will ever be is about the projectile and how it's doing something when the effect can only be described from your eyeballs as you turn beneath. You and your reference yeah. frames are ruined. The yep. perfect example. So I point out how there's no deflection on Earth, nothing's turning underneath, we're not observing things drift away a thousand miles on the equator. And Simon Dan reverses that into you, Nathan, he's referring to me, and your, Nathan's, reference frames have been ruined. It's like, what are you talking about? You showing something not drift is you showing how we don't have the drift that the globe claims we will. But he's reversed that onto me like I've claimed we should have drift when I point out that the globe claims we should have drift, but we don't. So he has to attack me and my claim that we should have drift? No, that's not my claim. I'm showing how we don't have it. The globe claims we do. You then come back at me with, the globe doesn't claim we're supposed to drift. That's your claim, a flat earth claim. Coriolis is a flat earth claim and I've debunked it. What a complete drongo. I mean, Simon Dan, if you're listening to this, everyone on this panel considers you thick as shit, just so you know. And he's no, still he's holding on to that, that statement, isn't he? He still is holding on to it now. How are you supposed to defend it? What reference frames, Dan? You want to lay out what reference frames I claim on a flat earth for anything. Are you not going to find a claim that you're going to have a necessity to debunk? My reference frames are ruined. I didn't have any. So let's look at who does. Oh, you do. So when you tell me that my reference frames are ruined and I don't have any and the only one that does is you, that's self-defeating idiocy from a moron. That'd be you, Simon Dan, a moron. Their defense is mathematical because the effect that they're trying to claim these days is mathematical. They're trying to move away from what Coriolis, the Coriolis effect actually is. That's why they always start detailing the projectile or the airplane or whatever, because they need to mathematically defend a mathematical effect that they don't have a real world effect. Well, what they're really trying to do is redefine physics and natural consequences of motion. So they are basically left with, oh, spinning ball in outer space. Okay, there is Coriolis effect. It was described very early on in the, like even in the 60s, descriptory videos and all that. It was like, yeah, Coriolis effect. It's right there. It's described. It's recognized. Now... All these years later, these decades later, these people that are fans of it, they're starting to realize that's not good. <laughs> that claim is not good because as soon as you try to explore the claim, it proves it's not there. So they're trying to redefine natural consequences of things. And of course, they're trying it with the gas pressure without a container as well and many other things. They're redefining physics through their own religious beliefs. They're trying it's, it anyway. I think, I think they're trying to redefine math into physics. Indeed, they're trying to turn mathematical equations like pseudo-four-space time bending into something that we observe in the sky. 
In other words, inventing a fourth dimension to scribe the heavens with. That's pathetic. I've already said it. But Arwen segued beautifully onto gas pressure. So any evidence that you can have said gas pressure, which we are all breathing, without a container. Well, the fallback word like is gas. gravity. Sorry. Oh, Jorge. I'm just uh, quoting um, uh, Kat. Uh, you mean pressurized gas without a container? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how can we have pressurized gas without a container? Yeah, if you like. No, you cannot have. But funny how he fixed that question, right? But he never actually gave the response to the question he then fixed. <laughs> funny enough. Right, it's just a semantical correction, not actually an addressal. Arwen used a good word, redefine, because now on this question, they have to make up stuff, just like on the previous question with Coriolis. If you have a false model, if you live on something that's not real, you have to redefine terms. There is no Coriolis, there is no gas pressure without containment, so they're the ones coming across with the redefinition of what it is, and they're sounding so silly these days. Well, yes. no, because they actually... don't have like a century of actual physics-based experimentation to back those claims up. It's basically science fiction. That's what they're doing. But they. But they I think are... it's missing the second part, which is how can you have gas pressure without a container next to a vacuum? Yeah, but what you're missing, I think, is we're dealing with fundamentalist maniacs, so. When they state that that is possible, they're stating, yes, that is possible on the globe model. They always add in that. Eventually, that comes in. Yes, that is possible on the globe model. So they are living within a model. So they, when they say, yes, you can have gas pressure without a container, gravity does all that, and it all happens within the globe model, they're speaking about their belief system that they're lost in and I don't think we'll ever leave. I think However, that's not the case. <laughs> so gas isn't being held here by gravity 9.8 meters per second down, per second per second down. That's not happening with gas. So yeah, even but we're not they're not talking about reality, Nathan. No, I mean, no, but I but about my point is, Brian, they're not talking about their model either. So when they say, well, it's possible within the globe model, no, it isn't. You have an assumption of atmosphere, sphere-shaped air, that just hangs around in a sphere shape. In other words, the assumption is that, well, we've automatically got air in a sphere around our sphere-shaped Earth assumption. So they don't need to justify the gas pressure without a container bit because they're already assuming atmosphere. Yeah, yeah that's why they... Sorry. Go on, Emma, come on. I was just going to say, it's very simple, right? They got photographs from space looking at the ball with all the black surrounding it, which must be a vacuum, and they're breathing. So the Earth must be a ball with an atmosphere, and it must be contained somehow, even though there's no walls containing it. So they just say, well, let's just do gravity. Nobody really knows what it is anyway, so it should probably be able to do it. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. That'll be a good enough band-aid. It worked every other time. Let's just say gravity. Gravity's the container. They literally say gravity is the container. It's like gravity isn't a container. It's not even a force. But you're going to tell me it's holding the atmosphere, sphere-shaped air by making gas into homogeneous layers that press down on the gas below. No, that's not gas behaviour. It certainly isn't a description in the model. You know, you've not got anything that's overcoming entropy in the heliocentric model. Far from it. Yeah, but don't miss Brian's point. I made a little song there once, and a perfect times ago that... It was the remix of that that song Tragedy. It's like every time there's a tragedy in, in the globe, it's gravity. When your globe is there and you need that air, it's gravity. When it should be doing this, it's not doing that, it's gravity. <laughs> Everything's always gravity, it's like it's their escape goat. Hey, Tommy, that's why it scares the Jesus out of them. Oh, it was funny when I dropped that one, yeah, the gravity one. Gravity. On 24-7 last night, Matthew Learns came on and told us that gravity is a pseudo force creating a pseudo-container, and he thought that that was a great answer. What the hell? You know, what, what created the universe for them <laughs> in the Big Bang? What, what pulled all the hydrogen together, all the hydrogen atoms, and, and, uh, and made everything explode into different elements in the, in the universe? Oh, it was gravity, wasn't it, it pulled them together? That's a good answer to me. What, what, did, what, that sounded like a pretty good answer. 
Uh, just one thing. Well, what does pseudo mean? Uh, that means like fake. Means what? Back to back to Brian's it's point. Really. The, back to Brian's point. He made a good point. They'll even make up stuff when it goes against their model because it's their belief system. Exactly. Doesn't matter. What, what demonstrate? What what they do is. They state that that is all possible within the globe model. It's all explained. And then they'll show you the best they can do in reality is claim the effects of the globe model. Like you've never seen curvature, but yeah. they can always talk about the effects of curvature, can't they? Um, can't show, they yeah, you can can't show you gravity, about... we can show you the effects of gravity. We can't show you the force, yeah. but we can show you the effects of the force. It's the same thing, double speak and tricks. If you can only get the effects of gravity or the effects of curvature, how do you actually measure the actual thing? You don't. You're talking about geodesics in space time. You don't. You're talking about an effect that exists in a medium that isn't real, that only is in existence in mathematical descriptions, and then ascribe to what they say the heaven is, a second law of thermodynamics violation. But the description of what they say the heavens are only exists in maths, is a pseudo-geometry. Which we only study the effects of. <laughs> there are no effects. Right, maths isn't a cause. When you say, well, I've got a description in mathematics, oh, right, that's fascinating. So you think you've described something accurately with your mathematical language. Yeah, further to that, it's going to cause blah, 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 blah. No, it isn't. Your description's never going to cause anything. My language just, might cause an effect in somebody mentally, this, um, but it's not going to. No, it's not going to force gas to do anything, right? Me describing something. I see Jen Panda server early enough, and I mentioned uh, to some someone in there about the sex thing. So I brought your sex in that argument up, saying that you, know, you need you need straight lines to measure an angle, and then all the globals are going, "Oh, um, no, you don't. You, you can." I said, "I said, show me it, how you can measure an angle without like, straight lines." And he, he said to me that, he, you know, he showed me the definition of an angle, which obviously has an angle is curved. And he goes, oh, look, he showed, I said, show me the definition of a curve, of an angle. He's not like, oh, I asked you. He says, how do you measure an angle without straight lines? And it just wouldn't answer the question because obviously it proves back what you were saying about the, the section argument. I said, why don't you come on the show and argue it yourself to Nathan because it ended my argument. But I think it's probably the, you know, it's what's been argued at the moment. And he goes, uh, and then that, and Jen Panda comes in and goes, oh, if anyone goes on that show, right, they're banned from this server for a week. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, oh that wow. is beautiful. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, get that. So you're so terrified of me that you're willing to ban your little minions from your own server if they come here. Oh, that is so, so telling. Oh, thank you. Mate, thank you very like, much for I informing me of that. <laughs> I said, why, why not? I said, Actually, like, Ricky, I says, I says, Nathan gives you a chance to, like, hang yourself, basically. I was like, if you go on the show, you, you could, because he was going, no one gets a chance to talk, and Nathan always moots you and talks over, because he has done that to me in the past as well. Goes, but you will get a chance to provide your evidence if you are confident and you come in there, but he will give you the chance to talk about it so we can slam you on it. Do you know what I mean? So you do get a chance to put forward that, your that's, arguments. But that's what people it is point right out your there, behavior. bro. That, that's what it is. He knows that if somebody comes on this show, and, and starts trying to use their argument, it's going to be devastating for them. So he's literally Absolutely. banning people from coming here to make the argument. Because if he had an argument, if any of them had an argument, they'd be here, they'd be destroying us with it. He would say, go out and spread this argument all over the world. But instead, and you're to banned the, if you show up right? here. That you, you know, that's Jim Panda being smart for for a minute. That's really smart. Sure. That's really uh, tactical. Sounds like a cult to me, really. It is, Owen. Yeah. 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 Go ahead, Owen. Isn't that like one of the core traits of a cult? Yep. yep. To ban uh, your cult members from getting informed. That's right. With others. Yep. Defectors. And you can be shunned in a cult. It's called shunning people. Oh, you've gone against the ways of the cult. Then you will never return. You are banished. I'd just like to say at this stage that the only reason I have the open door policy I do is so I can say that I have the open door policy and that all are welcome. Now, would I dream of banning people for the reasons that they've gone to GEMS and presented our argument and I live in fear that having it presented at GEM Panda's server might mean that my arguments fail? 
and therefore people will see how my argument's pathetic? Well, that's what Jen Panda's saying. Don't come and present the arguments here because they're going to get ripped apart and I don't want to see that happen. If you do go to that server, that would be the Flat Earth Science versus Pseudoscience server, the one we utilise for Flat Earth debate, then you will be permanently banned from the globe cult. Actually, the anti-Flat Earth cult. Let's say it like it actually is. I think Tommy said it's only a week he gets banned. Was it a week or a month, Tommy, that you get banned for if you if the one of them runs over? Either way, it's a slap on the hand. It's like, don't do that and don't go outside and don't defect. Yeah, either way, thank you, Tommy, for telling us that. Yes. That, that, that tells us exactly where they are mentally in, and, and <laughs> physically in this argument. It hurts them this argument it's that bad you can't talk about 90 can't talk about straight lines don't go on that show <laughs> you'll get hold on. banned hold on what 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 kind of i disagree the argument tells us right where we are with them what yeah we kind know we guess punk is gonna let somebody talk to them like that and tell them where they came and can't go minions that is weak minions good 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 soldiers good minions yeah contrast That's that to what panda has Contrast that to what I say to you guys, right? You'll, you'll come back like Arwin, right? He's disappeared for a few days. Was he in any way obliged to come or go or anything? No, 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 no. He's under absolutely no obligation. Same for every single person in the server. Nobody's under any obligation whatsoever to come, to stay. As for me holding some authority about where they go afterwards, one outrage. That's our opponents, though, isn't it? That's the globe court for you. That's hilarious. <laughs> I didn't I didn't even know Arwen was gone because I haven't been here in a week. <laughs> like what? Are you guys I mean it's me a grown ass man. Are, are it's you gonna guys... reflect on you. Oh. Sorry, just ask guys, just do a quick wrong. round robin. Yeah, how dare you Everyone chocolate not show up for a week? Oh, hold on a second. Before uh, we get into this, hold on. Hold on. John, he, he hold on. Just just one sec. Just do, just do a quick round robin, not necessarily with the guys in Discord, no offence, but the guys on the G Plus panel, right? If I said to you today, if you go to Jose's, right, you're never coming back, what would you do? What would you, what would be your reaction to me in that moment? Oh, yeah. I'd love you. One at a time, I had 10th first. 10th first, I had 10th first, then I had Arwin, then I had Brian. Yeah, I'd call you out before all. Okay. Oh, were you, Adam? My bad. Okay, Adam, then 10th. <laughs> You'll go last. Okay. Whoever, 10th, please go ahead. Do you yes, need a question I would again? call you out to your face instantly. I know damn well you would. Anybody else? Yeah, me. I was second. I, go ahead. I'd be like, uh, who are you? Okay. <laughs> Nathan, I, I don't want to do some phone shit phone. like that. What, are you, what is this? What's going on? I'd look at my phone. Like, am I on the right show? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> What's going on? Oh, my God. I think uh, I'd, uh, hey, no respect for the order. We, we need Sarah. to get some order together, lads, because we're all... Arwin, the then Brian. Arwin, then Brian, then Adam. Go ahead, Arwin. <laughs> You're not name, your name is not Arwin, Neil. <laughs> I'm just yeah, not having I, Nathan I'd be laughing. the order. Somebody else tell me the order to do oh things, and I can't have Nathan doing it. I'm going to try once more. <laughs> right, I'll, I'm going yeah. uh, to stay Stop, everyone, stop. Everyone, stop, including Arwin. Arwin's me. going next. But just want everyone to stop before he does. And I'll ask a question again. The <laughs> audience has lost track by now. So if I was to tell you, Arwin, that were you to do something specific or go somewhere specific, you'd never be welcome back, what would be your reaction? Well, it all depends on how you would say it. I think I'd, you'd, I think you would probably be joking at first. I'd be laughing, ha, ha, ha. And then like, wait, are you serious? <laughs> no, I mean it. If you go to Jose's... I will disown you. You'll be banned. You won't be allowed back in if you want to. Are we? I'd be severely shocked. I'd be like, oh my Absence God, not ball. you, Nathan. Don't go ranty on us or something. Don't go ranty. Okay, fair enough. Right, Brian, go ahead. Uh, if you said that to me, Nathan, I'd be joining Horses immediately. Yeah, that's, that would be my... That is exactly what I'd do. I'd do it out of spite. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. yeah, I'd say, well, fuck you. That's exactly what I'll do then. Yeah, no, you don't, you're not the boss of me. Yeah. <laughs> that did happen in a workplace once. 
<laughs> that did happen Sorry with that, an employer. Sorry, I dropped out my internet cut off for a moment. Hold on a second. The DDoS me. Uh, I'm going to get to Adam last because he's probably got the, the most important point to make on this ribbon, but just bear with us a second. Go. Just go ahead, Neil. You go first. I would say, is this coming from the top, Nathan, or is this your decision? You'd ask me if it was Dave Weiss telling you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It, it, it would be yeah. me. It would be me telling you, right? It's comparable to Gem Pandas telling his server participants that if they come here, they'll be banned. <laughs> just, I can't quite believe this. Just what is uh, going through the guy's mind? Seriously, but for a week, but there's a dilemma as well. Because if this was the type of show that I was on, I wouldn't be here all these years that I've been coming here. So to me, it would just not even be a serious thing. Sorry, but there's a bit of a paradox to the whole situation as well with what Jam Panda is doing. Because how would they know? Right, that somebody would be going there because unless somebody I was getting, would be uh, watching them. I'll get, I'll get to that next. Yeah, That's where I was going next. Oh, go on, Riven, because you're going to run past Adam for sure. Sorry, mate. Sorry, I can't help it. I'm excited. <laughs> Are you just nodding along? You're just like, yeah, because you know I hear the conversation. I, I haven't finished. Like, yeah, like, just, part just of the put crowd. myself on mute. Oh God, <laughs> I'm going to get complaints on this show. I know I am. <laughs> God, Adam, go ahead. <laughs> It's nothing like being built. That, that, I think I'd agree with Brian. I'd have laughed, headed straight over to Jose's, I think made a number of statements, but then I'd probably be driving down south just to check whether the back of your neck had a scar on it, mate, because it would be so the opposite of like what Chocolate says. We've been here all these years. I'd be thinking you've been taken over, captured by ballers, brainwashed or something. For that to be coming out of your mouth, it's kind of the antithesis of why we're here. We're here because we're individuals, yeah, that share a common viewpoint. We're not part of a cult where our views must be aligned. Amazing, Check the hand it? and forehead. It's because they're part of the consensus. They just don't appreciate when they behave like a cult. And likewise, if you're in a cult, you don't know you're in a cult. So when you demonstrate these cult-like behaviours and someone who's on the periphery, on the outskirts of your cult says, uh, that's very cult-like. They go, no, I will never associate with you again. If anyone watches what happens to um, psychologists who try and leave the congregation and you see what happens, there's a type of hazing, I can't remember what they call it, it's a type of hazing where a couple of psychologists members follow them around with cameras and haze them if they are seen talking or heard to talk about it or if they leave or anything there's just this, this, this like uh, you're basically harassed when you leave right. yeah, well and look they, they comment I've on my social media a, a really and all, all of my platforms well. calling me a, a flat earther when, when I left when I, I started arguing against them about some of their argue points as soon as I was like because remember when I used to argue against flat earthers like they used to all say a load of good things about me the moment I started it's arguing tiny. against the globe they all turned on me. Question, and they all, oh, question you're time. Really so we're all in agreement question. that we shouldn't. We're all in agreement that we shouldn't, but maybe we could ban Tommy for a week for being in gym. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair enough. It's fair enough. Hold on. Everyone calm down. Chocolate. Hello, 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 hello. Go ahead, Chocolate. Yeah, I just want to ask Tommy one question. Is it just banned for coming to this show in particular, or is there other places that the banning stands for? I think it's because for, I kind of well? advertised it there, isn't it? So like, obviously everyone who was watching and everyone who was listening, I kind of said, like, well, look, these aren't even my core arguments. I just said that you should probably go on to an F and Ugly show and argue yourself. And then he said, no, if anyone does that, it's banned. Then I go, but why is that such a problem? We went into why it's a problem. He said it's because Nathan Oakley doesn't give people a chance to talk, talks over them and Etc. I says, yeah. I says, you can't, you can't get me like that. I says, but so can you, because you've been like that for me. Uh, and he demonstrated then, because he muted me and talked over me that, that, in that within that argument, exactly the same thing. I says, when you're moderating a show, or you're, it's hard work. So sometimes you do get the ugly side that's portrayed. Because but in general, Nathan does let you present your case because he wants to destroy you on your case. So you do get a chance to speak, but you get held to what you say, and that's why a lot of people don't want to come on here because. They, they, they will get found out. They can't just spill their bullshit, like they said. Like, like there that's, is, that's what there they is, do. Um, Summer, I think we should get off our eye horses. And I speak personally. Yeah, I was kind of semi-banned from coming here, wasn't I? It was stop hanging around with Nathan's lot, because they're bad. It's not you, Adam. They're bad flat earthers. 
Uh, and that's why I was kicked out of Iron Realm. So we're not faultless ourselves on our side. Yeah, we do it to ourselves as well. Really, is he on our side? There's a lot that so sometimes there's, there's personal matters between people too, and I, and I find that like you know, that's what that's what that's what Jem. I don't know if that's what Jem hates about me, but he hates me. Like I've done something wrong to him personally. Like I don't even know Jem. I you know I've heard about him. I don't really care to be honest. But he, you he left talks the to cult. Me, like, I've personally made these you, arguments you, up because Tommy, I. Tommy, you left them. the cult, uh, man. You you create. Well, you, apparently, you, you arguments the because greatest, they are the best. The arguments. greatest. The greatest criminal act. Apparently, you left the cult. <laughs> yeah, well, That's it. I, I didn't know I was in the cult, mate. I just, I just believed that, like, obviously, that everything that I've been taught as a cult child was true. And obviously, it's like it, it, it might not be true. And, and I'm quite happy with that. Well, I think they, they don't even want to consider it for a single second that it could possibly be true. Like, they, they don't even fathom. They don't fathom that for a single second, they think that everyone's lying and acting and pretending that the earth's flat. Because they get special attention, nah, from and they get. I think. I think some of them. I said that's the worst. A lot of them do. I Before think you round up, hey, can I have a it's... shameless plug? Go ahead, chocolate. Just round out your point, then. Yes, Adam. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I don't know. If that... Am I being heard? Am I, is my yeah, headphones stuck? You're a bit quiet, though. You're a bit quiet, bro. Yeah, you're slightly low on volume. It's no, not no, no. to do with volume. Everybody's over talking everyone today. That's correct. Uh, right. Everyone's <laughs> over talking everyone. And when when you're trying to get a point in, Riven's pausing for a minute. Then you try and get the point in across, and he just he's not giving you enough time. It is he's relatively new though. Give him a chance. So we all had to learn this etiquette. We, he'll get there. No, nah, it's all good. No worries. What you chocolate? You had a point to make though. That doesn't mean I need you to take over the control of the show, thank you. Sorry. Go ahead, Chocolate. No, I was just going to say, that they, you say that you don't think for a second that anyone can think it's real. I think a lot of them do, which is why they exist, right? Because if, for, for, if none of them could accept that this is real for even a second, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. That The globe That's would just point. defend itself. They, they would not need to set up a, a headquarters to, to have a place where people can come and learn the same crap that they've learned since they were five, right? Because that's all they're doing. They're there to keep the, the, the thought police crap going, right? Because anybody that thinks outside of that box, as you just told us, is not even allowed to come back in the box for a good minute. I've just right? had a thought, Chocolate. <laughs> How many other arenas... Have got the equivalent of what we have in anti flat earthers. So we used Bigfoot earlier. Is there a faction of anti Bigfooters? No. Not that I know of. There might, I think there might be like a more generalized version of that, like anti conspiracy theorists, debunkers, like people like Mick West and people like that. But I don't think they, they, they specifically target groups like Bigfoot and Loch Ness Monster and shit like that. But it, it's, <laughs> it's kind of evident, think... right? Because why, if we're classified as that type of thing, why, are there, why aren't those type of factions exist? Right? I, think, I, think I get, I get why you most, ask. Because it's one of the most, like, when it come across, it was like, you, if someone believed the earth's flat, how fucking stupid could you believe the earth's flat? So they've gone in with such arrogance. That when I've actually looked into it and I've realised I'm gone, there could be a point there that they feel like they're going to be the stupidest thing that they ever want thought that they could ever be. And it's getting it frightened them that, they have, that that's, what, that's what they think. They think, like, when you hear flat earth, you think it's the stupidest thing a person could ever possibly be, right? So it's like the ultimate thing, isn't it? People think the earth's flat, really. Are these, these people, the, the, the spastics like that out there? And then they uh, go and look at it. You, you're right. <laughs> the reality, yeah, After Adam. like dissonance Sorry, training. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Say again, Adam. I say, he's, Tommy's right. It is, it's, not, it's not like where we're getting together to learn things. They're getting together to reaffirm the dissonance. So just, just to kind of keep patting themselves on the back. Yeah, you can ignore the fact that we can't have gas pressure without a container. And just to reaffirm the dissonance to each other. They're in that little cult saying, yeah, definitely the aliens are coming next week yeah, to save us all. And to keep telling themselves that, that's kind of what those clubs are about. Telling that you can have gas pressure without a container. The horizon is the leading average of all. You know, all this 
dissonance that's in their own heads. It's a little group to just help. They share their pain with each other, but keep bandaging each, each other's dissonance. But where, where is there? I, I, yeah. I've just thought of one, but can anybody else think of one before I get to the one I've thought of? I mean, as another example, ghosts. You know, there's plenty of people out there claiming that there's spirits, the, uh, the undead, people's relatives floating around in houses or poltergeists, all this kind of crap. Is there an anti-ghost faction where they're sitting around in echo chambers telling people if they don't go along with the anti-ghost rhetoric, they'll be banned? <laughs> no, is, that, is, that, is there anything well, like that? I've got one. Well, there well, is. People do get there declared is, um... insane by psychiatry if they, like, go ballistic over it. But there is, uh, Nathan, uh, there is, in, for ghosts and Bigfoot and stuff like that, what you have is you have people who are involved in claimed science, and most of them, it's pure pseudoscience, who look down their nose at people who might claim to have seen Bigfoot or claim to have seen a ghost, and they'll say, well, and it'll be always within a show that's put on by Discovery Channel or something like that, where they will belittle these people and kind of say, make kind of half light of it, make a joke of it, and say, well, there's no real scientific evidence, blah, blah, blah. When actually that's not true when it comes to Bigfoot or ghosts, believe it or not. There is some evidence. I don't know if you call it scientific evidence, but there is evidence, right? But the thing about it is, is the same people that will belittle them and say there is no science for any of that, are created a pseudoscience maniacs. Right, there I mean? is data. The serious scientists aren't getting involved in, in, in going on the television shows. It's always like astrophysicists and all this kind of stuff. They, they, they don't have real, real like biologists and stuff being on these shows. Uh, you may have for Bigfoot, but mainly it's just DNA people, and they can't, if they're given something and they can't fit that DNA to anything else, you know, they just say, I don't know, it's a mystery. That's all they'd say. But other than that, you have just a lot of pseudoscientists trying to claim science, claim they were an authority of some kind, and put down these groups. Now, I'm not saying these groups are correct, but the people who are putting them down are a load of bullshit. Sorry for the language. No, I totally get it. I'm, I'm more looking for the, the uh, comparison to the Gem Panda server, where you've got a very cultish behaviour going on in a group that stands against the rhetoric of a globe and the rhetoric of flat earth hence the term anti-flat earther well is there anti-ghosters i mean there is definitely i'll get to my example now anti-evolutionists right so you've got the evolutionary argument then the people who stand against evolution and then the people who stand against the people who stand against evolution so there are definitely camps of people groups of people who are you know coming up with the whys and wherefores and the reasonings behind why the anti uh, evolutionists are wrong and probably with very yeah, similar that. comparisons i.e. they have to stand against their own evolution claims in order to fight against the anti-evolutionists but that's the only one I can think of that, that's a good one Nathan because again you see they're not supporting evolution they're anti-creationists so they don't take their own stance they just attack the creationists they don't provide alternative they don't use evolution they just attack creationist so it's probably about the closest equivalent isn't it it's the only one i could think of and i yeah, sat here for yeah. two or three minutes trying to rack my brains for any other faction that i could think of that you could say right here's the mainstream opinion here's the anti-mainstream opinion and here's the anti-anti-mainstream opinion and you go yeah you got that in evolution yeah you got that in flat earth what else have you got it in pharmaceutical Look, look, Nathan. This might might be slightly offended with this, right? But there's 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 a comparison. There's, when he says that you mute me and you shout over me and stuff like that, I says that's that's what you do as well, though, Jam. You do exactly the same thing. So that you're, you're the very thing that he tries to paint you as probably the worst person that ever lying to everybody. You're a flat earther, blah blah blah. Whatever whatever he wants to say about you, but he, his behaviour can be very similar in the way he shouts and he's very domineering and very mutes people and talks over. Because it's it, it's just so so he's become the very thing he hates. So when by him doing certain like I don't know cult like things, I'm not saying that you're probably guilty of them, but I'm saying that there's certain things that uh, when he when 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 reflect upon that he was just as bad, bad as he could make out. Like he's he's basically spent his entire time the last five years, as far as I know, because he picked me up from your show. 
because in the comment section is when someone messaged me and says, oh, I'll join this server, we'll talk to you about the Horizon and all that. And I joined them and then they was all talking to me about you and everything like that. And that's how that's how I come across that server. They poached me from the so. So speaking to them, then I came kind of like, oh yeah, yeah, Nathan, 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 that. But there's, there's not much difference between what they're doing themselves. Do you get what I mean? No, it's just pure projection. You're having me on. Not much difference. That is what they're doing. They're just projecting their own digressions onto me. But with that, I'm going to say, if you are watching this on either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley Premiering streams, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you are watching this live, this is where we bid you farewell. So a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you. Smash the super chat, liked, commented, shared, subscribed, hit the PayPal link and all that good stuff. Also, below this video, you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy, and this is of particular significance if you drive an electric vehicle. Once again, stay tuned if you're watching on either Premier Stream. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I will see you all in the next video. That's crazy. I was gonna... Yeah, they're literally blend you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but how would they? But my question is, how would they know if you came on here unless one of them had to be on here to know? Ah, uh, that's what I was going to get to in the live show. We just didn't have time. So that's when you need the psychopathic non monster that is Gem Panda to triangulate his cohorts by way of flying monkeys. Did you see him on that server? You did. Flying monkeys. Much. Flying monkeys. Flying right. monkeys. He needs the people that pay attention to other people and not to arguments, right? Like coordinators or curators. That's what he needs. And he probably has them in the background. Or maybe he is doing it all himself, which would be even creepier. Probably. They Nathan, keep to those I was going to correct you on yeah, something. Yeah. You started off with uh is there any channels on bigfoot you remember that was started the whole thing well there are channels on bigfoot and you can't get booted off because all sizes are welcomed oh my god i can't stand Terrible. this guy's puns that is the oh god bigfoot you get it <laughs> Fuck it, man. ban him God, I've heard he's, I listen to his puns sometimes. He's got the, the lowest form of puns. And I can't I can't say he's the champion of the lowest form of puns. He says Banny. Don't, yeah, don't worry. Don't Banny worry, Winter. Tommy. <laughs> Tommy, yeah. you just proved you must have a big foot, but you'll heal from that. Yo, that was funny, mate. <laughs> champion Boom, boom. You always come out with them, that's the thing, because it's funnier because you keep doing it, like, you know, like, because they're good as well, and they're that quality, like, every time, so I've got to keep, you got to, you need, you need extra praise for consistency. Oh, God. Hey, Johnny Cerucci calls his people flying monkeys. How about that for a friendly thing? <clears throat> they don't even realize what they're being called. Flying space ball, space ball monkeys. You know flying monkey is? Flying space ball monkeys, isn't it? Space balls? No, it's a psychopathic term. No, I never heard it. Anybody here of flying monkeys? Anybody know what I'm... Oh, anybody know what I'm oh, I don't give a maybe maybe monkey, as yeah. I ask, I should be talked straight through yeah, the middle. Yeah, I've heard that. Maybe, maybe talk know, straight through the middle of me while I ask the question, Tommy. I would. <laughs> I just remembered when you asked me before. Anybody know what, what I'm referring to, to when I say flying I, monkeys? I think I, cut, I think I cut the reference to it. No one gives a flying monkey, Nathan. No, Tommy. Yeah, I do. The, the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Tommy, please go on mute. Right, just disturbing the conversation. It's getting really annoying. You don't know what it means. That means pop you... yourself on mute. Don't laugh through people who are trying to answer. Don't nod along. Thank you. Who was it that said? Tommy Two or three could people. Describe as go ahead, a go flying ahead. monkey. Uh, right now, if if he was to be 
somebody that was being sent in by somebody else, and he would be a, a what he's doing there would, could be considered kind of flying monkey. Really. You, you're trying to get somebody to control somebody else, I think, isn't it? Flying monkey. It's a narcissistic thing. It's a, yeah, it's a narcissistic spy. So flying monkeys are the people who are sucking up to the, the narcissist and basically out there spying on whoever they need to be spying on. So obviously, if in this case, in this scenario, you've got Jem Panda, who's the person who's actually pulling the strings, but he can't be the one actually looking in every corner. So he needs lots of little flying monkeys all over the place watching what other people do so that when one of the flying monkeys lands on his shoulder and goes, this person was in that science versus pseudoscience discord server okay flying monkey thank you very much fly away and then when that person comes back in he can take the great pleasure in saying i know full well you were in that server well how do you know it wasn't broadcast because they've gone in at a time that the show's not on yeah well i know they're not going to say because x y and z told me because they were in the server as well at the same time under a different name as a flying monkey Weren't you going to say oh, something what you about mean now. your time on a Discord channel? Well, I thought Flying Monkey was like, you know, when people say, I don't give a fuck. They go, I don't give a fuck. Thank, thank you, Tommy. Oh. Thank you. Go ahead, 10th. Weren't you going to say something about your time on the Discord uh, 24-7? I did. I did it in the pre-show. Talking about the misapprehensions about Coriolis effect when it's described from the projectile's point of view rather than from the spinning reference frame, i.e. non-inertial turning reference frame. Hmm. Nathan, I remember... Some... Sorry, Lieutenant, I just want to finish that. No, no, I thought it was something else. I, I didn't think that was it, but all right. No, that was it. Remember before the end of the, sh the live show, you were talking about uh, other... Um, what people, but other things like flat out that another reference to something that gets uh, attacked that has an anti version of it. And you brought up evolution, uh, 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 like anti creationists and that. Well, that is not really something different. It's the same argument, isn't it? Basically, it's basically tied in or married into flat globe argument. Because most of the people on the globe, well, a, a big, I can't say most, but a large portion of the people on the globe side are absolute evolutionists, whereas people on the flat earth side are creationists. So it's the same argument, essentially, isn't it, in a lot of ways? Yeah, they're certainly yeah, intertwined. The I can't... Have cults. Yes, they're definitely intertwined. I'm saying the ones that are can't prove anything, they tend to become the cults. Are you talking, uh, Brian, are you talking about in a, like a legal fashion in the, uh, or are you talking about like... No, I'm talking print? about the general baller, John. The general baller is, uh, is most of them are evolutionists. They believe in evolution. That's all kind of, evolution is only something that would turn up because of a global belief. So most globers are evolutionists. And I could say every flat earther. I can say this with more or less confidence. Every flat earther is a creationist because you can't not, um, you can't, you can't go back. Evolution just, you're just not going to go that direction. You would have walked away from that if you're a flat earther. Yeah, it's kind of like saying a heliocentric flat earther as well. You don't find any of them around. Exactly. Or a NASA believing flat earther. I've just thought of one. <laughs> there is one guy out there who's a flat earther and believes in NASA. Bad example. I won't mention his name. Yeah, but he's spaced out. Yeah, he's, he is, yeah. Well, I mean, if, if you've never contemplated it in context of, you know, there's flat maybe, but to be a flat earther, you, how do you keep those two things apart in your mind, you know? That's where the supposed pictures from the natural law violation come from, you know? Yeah, you can't square that circle once you know the gas pressure without a container argument. Well, technically, you have to be a... Sorry, Quentin. No, no, you go. You were first. 
Okay, thank you. Um, technically, it wouldn't even have to be a flat earther. You just have to accept that what a vacuum is and what pressure differentials are and how an airplane works. And if you looked into that and honestly looked at it and honestly looked at a submarine, there's no way you'd believe that they are going to the pressures they're talking about in the things they're talking about, regardless of whether you believe those pressures are there and the place exists. You would just, there's no way you could believe that they're going there with what they're saying. It just would be completely impossible, just on vacuum alone. I was going to say that as a child growing up, going through different phases, leaving uh, the Catholic Church, because I knew that there was a God, but he wasn't in that building, I told my mother. And then having a few years of just not being indoctrinated by anything, I just saw creation, and I knew there was a creator. There always is evidence here for anyone to see by the things that are made that there was intelligent design uh, behind it. And so when people would bring up evolution and all that, I'd say, open your eyes. I mean, I didn't have the arguments against evolution like I do now, but I didn't need them. If, if it's a design, also, there has to be a designer. There's also beauty in creation. If you look all around, there's like beauty everywhere. And that also is intelligent design. You don't just splat paint on the canvas and it's like, you know, beautiful art. You got to have intelligence behind it, right? Yeah, there's order. There's a, the, the, now that we're on flat earth and the, uh, stars, the sun, and how they repeat themselves, and how we have our seasons, and all that. That's just expresses a design. Well, it was one of the things I always found the most difficult to understand. And I wanted to, this, the, the worst, most stupid statements I've ever heard is that somebody who grew up within a religious background, like here where I'm from, where there was a strong Catholic power here and still is telling people what to do because they walked away from that or got away from that Catholic power people then decided that there was no God and no creator because religion failed them it's like religion has absolutely nothing to do with a creator that's a man-made setup so it's the most stupid and kind of arrogant or I don't know what way to describe it uh, statement uh, uh, or, or a stance to take and I've heard it from people it's like there is no God because religion failed them it's like what has religion got to do with anything you know it's like religion what the hell what has that got to do with a creator you know that has no bearing on whether it's a creator or not or not you know you know Brian I could uh, totally agree with you there I was talking to a person in a cult and it got to the point where every objection was answered uh, because they were saying they believed in the Bible. And I said, well, show it to me. Then I can believe what you believe. And they can show it to me. And I would show them the exact opposite. Well, this thing turned into a very... Uh, and these were good friends of our family. And it turned into a very uh, painful mental condition for this one person in, in, in the couple that we were talking to. It was the wife. And she said, well, if this is wrong, then there is no God. And I said, wait a minute, why are you saying that? Uh, you could have been fooled, like I was with Catholicism and how they try to rule me. Uh, but I believe in God. Why can't you? And so I said, no, it's either this or there's no God. And that told me a lot about that person. It's just that they were never, even in their religion, bowing to a false does, god. Does they that were the wrong? god. Does that being <laughs> wrong negate the, the existence of information? Well, that's that was my point. But, uh, as long as that's there, <laughs> it had to come from somewhere. So sorry. Right, right <laughs> but, but chocolate. That was my point. So let's go back to prior to being called out for these false, you know, doctrines that they held, because they realized they were false. Now that person is no longer faithful to that cult that they were in, but is also just abandoned any, uh, say, desire to know God. So what happened there? Well, when you look at it before, during, and after, it, it only proves one thing. They were never subservient to that religion only. It was part of them, and that pride was in there. 
So when their pride got hurt, then there is no God. Well, look, you can kill my pride all you want. I'd rather have God than my pride. And so it's an issue of pride at the end. Well, the meaning uh, of religion is return to bondage. If we look it up, the root word and the meaning is return to bondage. Religion is what hung Jesus on a cross. Well, th another statement that always make and this really infuriates me, nor I used to, I don't let it bother me now. Because this all comes from a lack of responsibility from people. The claim about religion uh, uh, failing them, so there is no God, that's a lack of responsibility, personal responsibility. But there's a much worse one that really gets to me, and that is, if there was a, if there was a God, how come all these people are starving in Africa? It's like, these people are starving in Africa because of us, not because of whether there's a God or not. It's like, that is on us. We are How is it on us? Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How is it on us? Define because us. Of, well, it's on us. As in when he says us, life. I think he mean, means other people. Not I you. Think he means I, us on this panel. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I know yeah, that. Yeah, us, define us you. as a mankind or a certain yeah, country. Ma mankind, human beings. Who are leaving these people starve? Or are human the beings? Country? Hold on. Let's just, hold beings? on. Let's just get it clear. I do actually blame Neil for that. Oh, well, I'm starting to blame Neil. True, I'm true. starting to blame Neil now as well. <laughs> well blame the Damn New Yorkers. I remember, if I may interject, uh, I remember the great Rush Limbaugh before he passed. He, he said, if you're living in a God-forbidden place, and he was mentioning a place in Africa that was dealing with uh, water shortages and drought and food shortages, here, I got one advice for you. Move. So, which was, you know, kind of like in your face. Well, if it's not habitable for you why are you still there second all the aid that the people with hearts sent to those countries guess who gets it the warlords the warlords use it they never feed the populace so what's god got to do with that why are you sending money to warlords yeah but see the thing about it is regardless of the whole situation it goes back to the human being the human being or is allowing the human being to starve it's not like the, the point I'm making is the, the people who state if there was a God, there wouldn't be people starving in Africa. There's people starving in Africa because other people are allowing them to do it. You know what I mean? The, the, why is there no uproar in public about this? Why is there no uproar in public about all the people who have always been starving in, on the continent of Africa? Why? Well, that was, that was my exact point. That was my exact point. People do care. People do send money. And it gets into the hands of the warlords, and it never gets to the people. So people are trying to live by conscience and feed their fellow man, but it's just not getting there. So now take care of the problem. Get rid of the warlords so that people don't starve. Yeah, but it's not... But my point is, I think you're complete... I, think, I don't know if you're getting this, or maybe you're not. Maybe I'll get this. But my point is, God is not responsible for that. You can't blame God. When yeah, we but the, have the ability the, to change it. No, we're not. I am getting what you're saying. I'm yeah. also saying, God, the the people who are sending money for food are guided, a lot of them, because, one, they care for their fellow man. Others who are uh, believing in God know it's the right thing to do. So it's intertwined somehow as to where the money came from are from good, willing people, some of them being uh, you know, instructed by their conscience to serve God. Because, you know, if you see someone hungry, if I see someone hungry, I'm feeding them. I don't care who they are. I'm not going to give them money because they'll go buy booze for the most part, but I'll feed them. Yeah, well, the, if, like the if point I can, the, uh, oh, sorry. No, I'm sorry about that. No, go go ahead. Ahead. Oh, no you go ahead. No, go thank ahead. you. Uh, uh, no. Yeah, I just want to I just wanted to add something to that because this is a type of conversations I have with uh, some of my close acquaintances. But before you establish, you know, if there is a God, why would He do X, Y, and Z? First, you have to establish an existence of a Creator. Now, regardless of what religion you follow or what belief system you follow, there are signs when you look around us. You know, especially when you go out to the mountains or you go out, you know away from civilization, you clearly see the effects of, you know, intelligent design to the point where, you know, children, like imagine if religion never existed, you know, children would be predisposed in believing in the creator. You know, it's just one of those things that 
is hardwired inside of us to believe that there is a creator or there is intelligent design. You know, ideologies like atheism and evolution, it comes later on. It comes as a, as a learning, pro, you know, it comes as something, you know, that you're indoctrinated to believe. It's not something that you're predisposed predisposed to believe i can't even say that word but yeah that i mean before even any of that you know why would god do x y and z i mean there is an existence i mean there is existence of intelligent design you know it's undeniable when you look at the 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 you know some of the effects of creation around us just observing the universe or you know i'm just using it generally uh very broadly if you look at the universe around us you clearly see that it didn't come haphazardly there had to be intelligent design behind it well, the Bible says creation declares this glory. I have to agree. Well, I mean, there's only one conclusion that when you've got data and information, there has to be an input. I mean, they're saying that the begin, the begin, Big Bang, everything expanded into everything we see today, and all the gravity collapsed on itself, and you know, all the things synchronously. You know, we have you know night and day. We have you know whatever. Um. So. <laughs> That all happened without no intelligent design. That's a lot harder to believe than actually somebody just put this in place. Somebody, you know, or something um, created it, you know, intended it purposely, you know, in some input. And it's the only logical conclusion that that takes less, less insanity. It takes more insanity to think, mm, well, yeah, it's always been here. It's always easy. It always has. Um, bang. No need for no creator. Like that, that to me is just like, oh, it sends a shiver down my spine of like, this is intuitively wrong. I, Nathan, um, I meant to apologize to you earlier about um, yesterday. Uh, I didn't hear your question, and I ruined a good point about the controlled release. Uh, so I'm sorry about that. I can't even remember what the conversation was about, so it's not like I was first, but maybe oh, bring, yeah. bring the conversation back up. I don't know what it was. I can't remember. Well, was you uh, said in context of uh, the you know, ma making the paradigm shift to Einsteinian in the curriculum. What does that say about, you know, this possibly being a controlled release? And I, I completely screwed that up. I'm sorry about that. Fine. I still, I only vaguely remember what the point was, so it can't have been that important. I, I do generally think that, that, that quantum mechanics, the onset of that has, has, um, brought this to the forefront in other words it's a kind of natural progression from people realizing that we don't have an einsteinian world and the quantum mechanical world is now the current rhetoric and there's a lot of bullshit in quantum mechanics as well you know the, the scientific validity that it offers is wonderful and it's led to lots of new bullshit artists with lots of new bullshit but it doesn't change the fact that that does fundamentally debunk the Einsteinian paradigms that are currently in place with heliocentrism. And if if that particular um, band-aid mathematical description in pseudo four space is no more relevant than the 106-year-out-of-date band-aid mass-attracting mass that we're fighting to get out of the education system, well, if that's the case, then we can only assume that this heliocentric system will eventually crumble to the wayside because it is invalid even by the standards of current mainstream consensus science you know heliocentrism has been debunked by consensus science let alone actual the actual experimentation data that you get from quantum mechanics which is where this conversation you know spans from when you talk about the ontological primitives or although he didn't label them that's what tommy was just talking about you know when you've got the everything from nothing first law of thermodynamics violation versus the requirement to have a, a knower to have information in the first place validated by experiments in terms of the delayed choice and the double slit experiments well knowledge of the which path in that instance double slit that knowledge requires somebody to know it a knower so when you come to the ontological primitives and deciding whether or not there's going to be a, a creator or not it's not exactly a difficult choice you know, I, I was one of the people, I know a few people on the panel were like, no, there are no atheists, flat earthers. That was actually something I did definitely brace against when I first got here. I was like, no, I don't want that. I don't want to open the cupboard to my skeletons. No way, <laughs> you know. No, I don't want that. No, there's not a god, <laughs> you know. And I braced against it for the longest time until we got to the ontological primitives. I'm like, oh, that there's no logical 
there's no way I can lean towards everything from nothing. It, it cannot be that way. It just, it won't, it can't, it isn't. And therefore, what's what? your alternative? Well, there's only one, a creator. They'll, they'll but, all straw man you though and say that you, you, it doesn't, we don't say it comes from nothing. Uh, the, the rhetoric is, oh, we don't say, obviously it's not comes from an unknown. But um, at the end of the day, it, you're saying it all happened without any sort of intent. And I think like the, the, the earth wasn't here at the beginning of the Big Bang. And you're saying everything that happened after that was just random uh, energy being spurted out that collapsed on itself, that created new elements by itself and, you know, created cosmos and galaxies. And it's just like crazy. Like it's all happened on its own, just out of random energy. It all just collapsed in on itself and just had these waiting for all the and you're saying no input at all was being given by a creator. It just happened. So they're saying, Oh, it could always like it could expand and keep collapsing and keep expanding and collapsing. So now they're just like so now they're just running away with any anything else is possible, but that it's it's it, they they're going on like it's easy to believe that the world the universe goes through an expansion and a collapse and it, like you know, the big yeah, the term. big snap than it is to just believe that well maybe, maybe you know, it was created by God. Sorry about that, Tommy. Sorry, no, always on bubbling anyway. Sorry, go on. No, no, but but that but but the term you're looking for is necessary existence. That's what the atheists will purport. They'll purport that there was a necessary existence, that there was a that there was an originator, a first originator, but they won't ascribe it to a creator. They'll ascribe it to the cosmos, to Big Bang, to you know. But mathematically, they're getting that from dividing by zero and getting everything in existence. I mean, it's absolutely absurd mathematically and in practice, and it violates the first law of thermodynamics. You know, there's a lot of reasons not to go with the uh, current paradigm when they describe the Big Bang. Um, again, when you get down to experimental nitty-gritty, you don't even have to label it a creator. Noah. To have knowledge, to have information, you need a Noah. So at the start of the process, the start of it all, there must have been a Noah. There is no other alternative. There's only two ontological primitives. Exactly. I mean, and, and that's it. I mean, I, I was a, I was a proper atheist coming into this. I was a real. I mean, I've watched all the Thunderfoot Twitter videos, laughing at Ray Comfort. It's a laugh at all of them. When the internet first came on, we had the dial-up internet. That's when I first got on the internet. And I used to watch all them KSI and all them before they got famous. You know, before Thunderfoot got famous, I used to watch all these videos and laugh at like the creationists. You think like, oh, they are look at that. They think this and that. They think that. And obviously, they don't know the difference between a monkey and a, and, a, and a, the, the, the amphibians and. Blah blah blah. I used to go, I used to go out laugh along with it all, and then uh, I was again to flat out like the arguments with flat Earth. We realise things aren't what they seem, and you know, then you look into deep space and you look at what things actually are, and you start to really think about it. You know, you when you start to really be honest with it, you, you just you, there's a reason that you, you think to yourself, how could this amount it itself? It's just this is becoming absurd now. You realise how absurd what you used to believe. You used to believe that it just happened over time when you add millions and billions of years to it that's what ma that makes me laugh is when globus talk about it but billions and billions of years I, and I, I laugh because I, I make stupid examples and they say that it's incredulity but I, I try to break i break it down simple if you've got all the ingredients to bake a cake and you've got all the ingredients on the underside right you can sit there and pray that that them them for billions and billions of years that they, that will make a cake but it won't you know it'll just rot and decay um <laughs> If you if you want a cake, you got to fucking bake a cake, and uh, obviously that them ingredients, whatever the ingredients are of the, of the energy and all that, the Big Bang is is you know what we have today. We're the makeup of whatever it's been created from. Right, I gave you this term as well a couple of days ago. Functional sequence specified complexity is what you're detailing. You know, QE gives the example with the sandcastle, far less complex than life, but no matter how many eons elapse. The sand dunes will never form a complex structure like a sandcastle. You know, it just won't happen. Um, again, you need intelligence for that to occur. But I, I do quite fancy so going back onto the now I've been thinking about it numbing it over uh, in my mind since John brought it up. But given that you've got quotes like the first sip of the cup of natural science will make you an atheist, but at the bottom of the cup, God is waiting for you. I think that's slightly paraphrased. I can't remember who said it either. Maybe Adam will remember. Is it Krauss? I can't, I can't remember who it was. It's not relevant. But the point is, in terms of... I think the, it was Niels Bohr. Ah, thank you, Chocolate. Um, perfect. But th those sorts of quotes are coming out of the mouths of astrophysicists. No, of course not. Coming out of the quantum mechanics camp. Well, that's the current science. You know, that is the new hotness. 
You know, 106 years ago, Einstein was the new hotness. Now quantum mechanics is the new hotness. So when you actually look at current re rhetoric, it fundamentally undermines heliocentrism. Now that can't be something that is unaware at the higher echelons of society. They will be aware of it. It's current scientific rhetoric. It's the consensus. So based on that, you can say, well, there can only be a description of a top-down crumbling of this system. It, it, that's what we seem to be observing as well. You know, I can't describe it any other way. It is seem. Neil said the other day, well, why is it why is it the case that they're not um, having the space paradigm collapsing? I still see it on CNN. It's like, no, but it is. You know, we, we are in existence and, you know, getting larger in numbers. And your average Joe Normie is becoming more and more aware of this subject um, at a conscious level because of that. So, you know, that is definitely the case. As much as maybe in 2015 when someone like Dirth, Dirth said, oh, well, you know, this is going to go exponential overnight. Well, it hasn't. It's slowly trickled down. But trickle down, it continues. And the top of that trickling is quantum mechanics debunking the very foundations of heliocentrism. So to me, it, it, this is a paradigm change. It's not like I'm sitting here thinking, no, eventually we'll be blotted out, censored out of existence, because that simply isn't the case either. We're not having that happen. There's a perception of that happening. There's an overt stating in some instances that we are being censored. Or to put it another way, look over here at what we're censoring, general public. Again, that makes my eyebrows rise as well. So you go, okay, there's got to be a paradigm shift change that's happening as we speak. But like, it's already it happening way. palpably, if I may. Like, it's already so palpably, ha palpably happening right now and it has been over the last five years at least and that is that when we all started this out and somebody would bring up flat earth in an unsuspecting group you would get yelled at you would get people really loud that would be pissed off and would like try to rally everybody up around them to shame you into silence or or kick you out of the group now it's turned it's turning around and instead like the the four front runners of the globe belief they now instead go introvert and start muttering in themselves and like try to find another room to just start like ah the stupid flat earth but they don't do that big thing in the big group anymore because it doesn't work anymore that that part of the spell has worn off because of the sheer confrontation and in that sense, the normalization, everybody has been confronted with just like, oh, these are people. These are not evil was, cultists. These are say, people with their own problems and then they get used to it and then they don't have that easy response to latch on to re getting all riled up against flat earthers anymore. So there's a dramatic change like that as well already. Right, the stress is too much. Go ahead, Tommy. Oh. Oh yeah, I just want to say that uh, when Nathan was saying about the quantum mechanics, like already, I think they've because I've realised it contradicts the heliocentric models. Why well, they've already began the pro the process of like because I've had advertisements come up on my YouTube search about quantum mechanics and 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 general theory of relativity and how they don't mesh. And obviously, science I've had like a load of videos where I've researched it a lot, and I'm I'm already normalised. Like I, I've been saying, they normalise things, and obviously, what I feel like this is what they're already doing. They're already putting out the the cat that the already mental capacity to accept that something that that we've discovered with quantum mechanics doesn't agree with with Einstein. But hold on, Einstein is literally the holding the entire stuff, holding the entire globe together right now. So something that contradicts him could never possibly be accepted. But they have to accept quantum mechanics. So now they're already uh, psychologically like programming people. That's what the adverts come up on my YouTube search of oh well, quantum mechanics. Doesn't for it fit with uh, general relativity with the certain part, part of paradigms that we're going into so basically they're already kind of like justifying something that completely shuts out the heliocentric model which is what Nathan just pointed out and I think right. that's why they're doing this and uh, if you consider what we do here to be the tip of the spear in terms of this particular discussion there are people very intelligent people at the tail end of the spear that wouldn't classify themselves as flat earthers that are, that are doing what we're discussing at the top of the peak rather than the at the ground level in the trenches like we are. And those are people like Veritasium. Does anyone keep up with him? Very mainstream channel. Oh, YouTuber. Do, yeah. oh, do, oh, I've yeah. never heard of him. Very... Never heard of him. Go on. Uh, uh, was that Brian? Well, yeah, I just going to say he's very, uh, he's very much like it is what it is about stuff. 
Now, I don't know if he'd go as far as admitting it's flat, but he is very much, well, this is this. You know? Yeah, he's the guy with the video. Gravity's not a force. You got it. I had a lot of Globers very uh, upset. <laughs> as somebody on their own side, very matter-of-factly states that this thing is not a force. But do you see what... Not even you, a thing. Sure, but do you see why I describe him as the tail end of the spear in that respect? He's not rocking the boat. Yeah. He's got he's got he's got chit chats going with Neil deGrasse Tyson, but he's still, as far as I'm concerned, the tail end of this same spear, and it, it goes full circle. It's kind of the snake eating its own tail in that regard because it's the top of the spear or top of the mountain, however you want to metaphor it. Um, that trickling down effect that I've described starts with the people at the top of that chain anyway, the people who are actually at the forefront of quantum mechanics, and talking about God in that respect to the quote I gave earlier. Well, those are the people that start the process rolling and then we use their rhetoric, even though it's in the mainstream. So it's like, okay, why is it the case that we have so many arguments, so many citations that are from mainstream rhetoric in this regard? It's because it is actually the mainstream now. So you go, you start scratching your head and going, hold on, if what we're using to debunk, what we're even saying is 106 years out of date and the scientists at the top of the tree and when I say scientists, I use the colloquial term, you know, the, 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 the just so story makers, those scientists, they are all in consensus when it comes to this. This is the new mainstream. This is scientifically validated further to that if we want to actually take the, the genuine validity from it rather than the what is the consensus. Well, while there might be a lot of ambiguity in terms of consensus in regards to the new hotness, and there's a lot of bullshit as well, there is still experimental validity to those assertions that are coming from those camps and making their way down and being utilised by us. Also being utilised by people like Veritasium at the tail end of what I describe as the spear. Us, cutting through the current rhetoric as it crumbles. Now we take the brunt of that. You know, I'd much rather be in the Veritasium position. And I'm, I remember once about two years ago, um, Jaronism describing how he'd much prefer to have never have come out as a flat earther and have just come at the rhetoric in terms of how it doesn't align with whatever is the mainstream rhetoric. And he was describing a very similar thing in terms of how Jaronism would be perceived now if it was just Veritasium. He would be like Veritasium, very much so, if he wasn't a flat earther. But because he came out as a flat earther, suddenly he's he's thrown into the trenches by default, whether he likes it or not. Cast you down to hell. You get in those trenches now. You're going to be stomped on and ridiculed whether you like it or not. Now, I'm not saying for one second that the Veritasium guys even considered this subject. It doesn't matter. He's still making the same arguments that we make, isn't he? Nathan. Well, what, uh, what I, sorry, can I take one it? I, I posted in the war room a couple of days ago, two articles, same person, Avi Loeb. Uh, are humans lab rats? Question mark. Harvard professor says aliens created universe in the lab. I'll just read three quotes. Abraham Avi Loeb once headed Harvard University's astronomy department. Now he's a best-selling author and famous for his out of this world takes on alien life, including the theory that space rock Oumuamu may actually be an alien spacecraft. Second quote. In his new op-ed for Scientific American, Loeb explained why he believes the Milky Way and the surrounding universe might as well be a lab experiment of an advanced technological civilization. Third quote. In the piece, Loeb suggests how aliens could have created a baby universe by using quantum tunneling. He explained how this may be true owing to our universe's flat geometry with zero net energy. So they are looking to connect quantum with the heliocentric, but instead of giving God the glory, it's aliens. It's coming. Well, maybe, what, what maybe. I would say about Veritasium... Sorry, Nathan, go on. No, I was going to... That was what I was going to... Go ahead, Brian. I was going to introduce you to speak next. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Veritasium, like, when he brought out the video of Gravity is Not a Force, he brought that out before he brought out the video stating that the speed of light was never uh, never measured and can never, ban yep. can never be. And he used Albert Einstein as a hostile witness within that video. 
So it's like he knew, it's like he's structuring it, showing that, well, this is not a force. But then again, this part of this is not real either. You're not going to be. So it's very good. I like Feritasium. Regardless of him being on the other side, I don't view him as an actual enemy, if you know what I mean. I see YouTuber, but by the same token, you know, my, my comparison was to say that, you know, if you're not overtly stating things like, well, obviously we're not in a heliocentric system as the conclusion when you come across these things, you just point out discrepancies. That's what all Veritasim's doing. And it doesn't necessarily have to rock the boat too hard to do that. And in some instances, because he's skirting some of these issues that are definitely mainstream, he actually gets to discuss them with some of the pseudoscientists like Tyson. And I've seen him have discussions, and you're like, okay, so y you can do that. You have actually got a route into showing the mainstream pseudoscientists who are now the old and busted, let's make it clear, you know, he's talking to the old and busted who are going to have their rhetoric fall away from beneath their feet as the new hotness, that is quantum mechanics, pushes it to one side, debunks it effectively. It's not sugarcoated, that's what it does. Quantum mechanics debunks Einstein. Let's face it. Um, good morning, guys. Hello. Let's face it, that's how we all started, right? We all started just saying, huh, look at this discrepancy here. The you know, the label police are the ones that had to put us in the box and tell us who we were. When actually, I think most of us came to this uh, this conversation just thinking, why isn't there an answer for this? Yeah, agreed. A lot of people come here and get exactly. forced and in, pigeonholed into being flat earthers and demanded that they explain a certain model because the person they're opposing has decided they're a flat earther and should have an answer to a straw man. So that's how it normally rolls. People find themselves... If they're hanging off the hill, you know, getting getting their fingers pried off and shoved down. <laughs> Is that Eli? Yeah, of course it's Eli. See? Now, today, out of nowhere, I thought about Eli. I mean, I know know <laughs> and he pops on the show today. Was there any, uh, like, 10-gallon hats involved? <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, guys? Good to hear from you. What up, bro? Good to have you, Eli. Hey, Eli. Yeah, good to hear your voice, fella. Been a while. Yeah. And for a while, Eli, like crack villain, and currently like Tommy. Although Tommy's not on the main panel. He <laughs> uh, used to I, step all over people. Place, also. How do I get on there? How do I get on there? By being a really good oh. guest. <laughs> I'm trying, man. I'm trying. I can't be too talkative though. Like in general, I am like I just love debates. I love com. I love com. Uh, I love aggressive conversation, and that's what I mean. I'm. I'm. It's. It's, it's brilliant to listen to you do because you're like militant, like I am, and like I'm. And it's even effort. It's good to hear you do because it's even more effortless because you bring up the arguments consistently to what's going on on board, and that's quite difficult to do sometimes when you're arguing with these people. I still can't get over what you told us about Jen Panda server. I, I'm. I'm. I'm both amazed and not shocked at all because we talk about it all yeah, day long we it. describe it in detail how they're like a cult so to have it overtly stated you're like oh my god do they not realize what they're doing when they do that and the answer is no because they're on the side of consensus they just think no that's fine there's nothing i can do wrong in this regard demanding that you as ascribe yourself to the cult-like behavior that we have in this server uh, or else that's perfectly fine because I've got consensus behind me when I say that you must believe this, that and the other about my argument and don't ever let it be put in front of somebody that could challenge it. That's perfectly fine because my argument's globe argument and that's what everyone thinks. So this cult-like behaviour, perfectly acceptable. From that point of view, that's what we detail, isn't That's what we discuss. But to actually hear it happen, you're like, bloody hell. He's poisoned your name so though, much in that forum, right? He's poisoned it so badly that even when you even say the name, Nathan Oakley, it's probably worse than saying... Like the, the F word, like or the C word. It's your your name is potent in that vicinity. Do you know what I mean? So even the, even the, the the sheer essence of your name is just such forbiddenness. You know. So, oh bless them. Okay. I could just <laughs> rub their fuzzy little heads. Share your pain. Share your pain. I'd rub your little fuzzy heads and say bless you. <laughs> maybe if you've got maybe we watch so much pain that you agree. Not just subconsciously, but 
within the group that those that step outside of the groups uh, of pre prearranged things should be punished um, and have a punishment inflicted upon them uh, that they've all mutually agreed on. Seriously, that is so cultish. Mad the fact that they're agreeing to it. The fact that they picked me up and licked my wounds and took me in and, and like tried to tell me that, oh, no, even he just doesn't, like, he just ignores people. And obviously I watched from afar and then I was like, obviously, then I got involved in the debates again and I get, you know, and I come, come, come around Quantum Arrays and the back end of it with like Witsy and everybody and, and I kind of like it learns things from a different way and then like, you know, it, as you after after if we keep debate this long enough, you'll come across enough people eventually that you'll end up getting a good pattern and you'll eventually figure out like whether what you're arguing people care about or not, or the people that do care about how you know, and you'll get to the bottom of it and when you get there you think you realise like, this is this is something that you can prove with unreasonable doubt. So it's it's you know, if you're gonna listen to my point why I think the earth's round, I'll listen to why you think the earth's flat. And as long as you're willing to give your evidence why you think it's round and you you want them to accept them that evidence then also you've got to be willing to accept their evidence. So when I accept my, the, my opponent's evidence of it being flat, the way to accept that evidence is not to think about my world as a globe. It's to think of their world, uh, of a world, sorry, that isn't proven of whether it's a globe or not yet. So you have to look at it from a, a refreshed mind without the pre, pre, pre-programming pre of you already knowing it's a globe. So if you go in there with a fresh mind, you'd never think that the Earth is rotating. You'd never think that the moon was rotating. If you was, if you really had a fresh mind, you'd never look at the world like that. So you have to look at it honestly that way to learn sure. the flat Earth. But it does also work to their disadvantage when they describe it in that way. So I think it was John a couple of weeks ago was pointing out that when I said that the black swan isn't a flat Earth proof, he's like, well, it, it is only one step removed to take it as a flat Earth proof because you'd have a necessity of a geometric horizon if it was a sphere. And you can't describe um, the plane any other way unless it has... If it has a shape to it, regardless if it's a, I don't know, whatever, billion-sided shape as opposed to a spherical shape, you know, just one with like a disco ball, whatever they're going to describe it as, at some point that's going to necessitate a geometric horizon of some description, an edge to your view that's physical in nature, exactly as they describe it in the maths, coincidentally, that is actually their claim after all, but without it, without a geometric physical limitation to your view, i.e. a geometric horizon, it can only be flat, because any shape would would give you that. So therefore, the black swan does actually work as a, as a flat earth proof. The, the lack of geometric horizon means that we can only be on a flat plane. Nathan, it also I, I, proves I think... that... Uh, hang on, Tommy. Nathan, it also proves that Bob the Fallacy guy's presentation on the sextant has failed miserably for Jim Panda to say, don't say those things about the sextant, don't even go on their shows. Well, like Bob did, I failed miserably. Love it. Yeah, I like Bob did. Well that the, the... When when they when it just happens to be as well that that light refracts just over the curve to make it appear flat, so it looks flat some days, and the days that it looks a bit obscured because uh, of the atmosphere. Um, that's how yeah. we know the Earth's curve because cool. Cool. stop 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 just, stop backwards. stop stop. Your your description is they say if I beg the question of a sphere, then the light will bend around the sphere at a rate of the sphere in the sphere shaped air to make it look flat. Now, if you just remove all five of those assumptions, you've just got, it's flat. Because that's the actual information you're being presented with. It's just a, just merely justified with a string of begging the question fallacies that include, I assume the ground beneath my feet is curved. I assume the light that I see is bending around the curve that would give me a geometric horizon at a rate based on the R value I've measured from the geometric horizon that I cannot see. Further to that, the air around the presupposition that the ground is falling away from my feet is also in a sphere. It's atmosphere. It's sphere-shaped air. Hence, the light is bending at a rate of R that I can't derive to give me what appears to be flat in front of me. Yeah? All that is is a string of begging the question fallacies that never actually gets to the point. Tommy. The mental gymnastics Tommy, they're doing. Tommy. It, and, and Tommy. To, which, which point's more worthy? The one I'm in the middle of or the one that you've decided that you're going to talk straight through me with? Oh, definitely the one that one of the middle of. Have you got it? Sorry. I don't need permission, Tommy. I just need you to shut the fuck up while I'm in the middle of a sentence. Don't need permission, right? Global or flat earther, it makes no difference, right? If you just start babbling straight through the middle of me and then say, oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, 
That's going to piss me off royally. I just don't need you to be nodding along through everything everybody says. I've had endless emails and complaints about you, Tommy. I'm just telling you like it is. People are getting pissed off with you and therefore pissed off with me. Because I can't stop you doing it. No matter what I say to you, you've decided that you're just going to open your mic, middle of somebody saying something, and just blast straight through the middle of them, regardless of how many times I ask you not to do it. Now, there are times that other panel members do it, and the person who hears them shuts up immediately. Yeah, they're talking through the middle of them. But the person who's hearing that recognises that they've got a point that's valid that's going to assist the point. Typically, what you'll do is interject with one of your own personal experiences that relates directly to you and no one else. And then you go, is anybody hearing me? No, Tommy, it's just we can't directly link what we were talking about. You interrupted with you specifically in your own experience. But you've interjected and now wondering why no one else is talking after you've done that. Now, I don't want to labour this point with you, Tommy, but I don't know what else to do. That's all good, man. I didn't realise it was that deep. Just I didn't enjoy the conversation. Listen to the one of the shows. Read some of the comments. Listen back listen, to listen, somebody yeah, in the middle of a really I'm, valid point. I'm going to go on the live now. I'm going to check the live out because I don't have it on the screen. So, just you've got to appreciate that when other people do no, it's it. It's all good. Sorry, it's really ruined the show. You know, it's at the end of the day, you've got a lot to talk about. And sure, just I have, to have, the, I have just the same like, conversation with everybody, but typically it's it's. <laughs> Let's just drop it. Ugh. <laughs> I just want to say that Tommy actually has a lot of good points, and he makes Indeed. a lot of good points. Indeed, it's, that's why I'm being I, brutal on him. Yeah, Tommy could. It's just the timing. It's just the timing. With Tom, that's all it is. If the timing changed a bit. It would be so much better because Tommy always has something to say, something that has merit. Well, so, he's yeah. learning. I understand his position. I understand his position though, because when I first come to this subject, I was excited too. But pertinence is yeah, key. He... I think Tommy's made a good few points, but he's, he's just got to realise that in the middle of a topic. You don't want to hear about the cheese sandwich you had last Tuesday. And that's... Yeah, no, mate. I hate myself. To as you, I know that, you know when you're giving me shit? I know, I know I deserve it. Do you know what I mean? That's I'm not arguing no, really. No, that's why I'm not saying, oh, how dare no, you say this? I know I deserve it because I am butting in. Dude, I know I'm no, meant to do it. Deserving it isn't what's happening. We're, we're, we're trying to encourage you. Yeah, we're not having a dig. It's exactly. like yeah, yeah, I know, mate. Yeah. I'm, I, I, listen, I appreciate your patience, honestly, and sorry for everyone that's complaining about me putting in because it's you know, I'm just as I said, I'm enjoying the, the conversation. I just said it's it's a bit more new. I don't usually come in here. You guys do this quite routinely, so you've all got you've all kind of learned where where and when and when and when and not to talk. And I, I'm not really used to it with this with this forum. Obviously, the other forum, I can just talk whenever. It's all right, come Tommy. on, Tommy. Then let's give it a go. Let's yeah. give it a go. But before we do, just Tommy, you're no different to the first of this breed was Arwin. You know, the amount of people in the comment section that would tell me to ban Arwin, don't let Arwin in, Arwin's blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. They just didn't recognise the genius of Arwin. Now, that is true for almost every panel member. But you're not actually a panel member, Tommy. <laughs> just want to point that out. You're just in the peanut gallery. <laughs> just, just wanted to point that out. However, 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 you know, there's a certain recognition that if you're not picking up what everyone in the panel's putting down, it's that we like you and you've got good points to make, but there's a certain there's a certain etiquette that you haven't quite got yet. That's all it is. Yeah, and we're encouraging you to get it. So while we might seem harsh, it, it, you know, don't take it the wrong I'm way. Saying, I know I deserve it, mate. It's not even like you're being harsh. When I, when, I get, when I get a bottle of kids, it's like when I was a kid, my dad was very harsh anyway. My dad was like proper, br you know, brutal. So like I learned lessons, you know, but if I didn't listen, I'd feel it. Do you know what I mean? So... Um, I've, I've learned hard I'm tough skinned anyway it's kind of the only way I listen the only way I listen really so that's why I say I appreciate the way you are with people and even though sometimes as you turn in I mean you're going oh fucking hell but the thing is I'm putting in all the time like you say I know I'm doing it it's not like some, I know I'm not I'm not doing wrong I'm like fucking hell yeah fair enough. Said, I'm getting carried away with the conversation no that's fair enough but you, likewise you know what, you know what? Sorry. go on I just want to say you know what it is and a lot of people find this difficult to get used to I did I found it difficult at first. Nate and you actually got angry with me a few times. It's that when you're speaking, if we were standing in a room together drinking cups of coffee, we'd be able to have talk conversations where we're talking over each other all over the place because we have yeah. uh, body language, right? And we'd be able to understand each other without having to give it a thought. But we don't have body language here. So, and it's a show. So there has to be, be just one person speak at a time. Yeah. Just one person yeah. speak at a time. 
Yeah, and when that person's finished, you talk, or if you talk over someone, you stop and leave them, talk, that kind of thing. So you have to listen to who's talking and what's going on and what the topic is. You know, whereas in normal life, you, you don't have to do that. So that's what it is. But it's a different type of conversation. I feel like I do do that. I feel like I'm on top of it, though, because, I mean, when he was talking about the, the quantum physics, I mean, <laughs> I, I was, I, was I, I kind of abbreviate on what, what the topic is. I try to keep it, I kind of keep it back to the, I'd like to keep it on topic, to be honest, because the nitty and gritty is where it's all at. But I guess just it's just the wrong time to interject when people are halfway through their, 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 their exactly. statement. And I just, That's it. That's all it is. So he's, you got to give him props for continuing to drag this out. This is comical. I know. Sorry, man. It's okay. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it, it's not what the first time. What do you mean? As he's learning, just keep interrupting. Uh, that's pretty good. As Brian was telling him, there goes Tommy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> See, I learned it. No, you haven't. Even though Nathan thinks I haven't, I have. No, you haven't. Yes, yeah. I have. We all do it, right? It's, 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 it, we all do it, but generally speaking, on the show, it's kept to about 10 to 20%, and that's tolerable to an audience. But with Tommy on the panel, it leaps up to about 50%, and it's really noticeable. And to all the people in the comment section, you know, recognise Arwen was the same, Neil's been the same, Still is to a certain extent in terms of the commenters, right? <laughs> we, 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 we all do it. We all do it. But here's the deal: this is a show, and Nathan's trying to produce a show to where the audience, when they get the end product, is isn't confused. So he's got to he's got to have some control as you know who talks and then a pause, and, and that's hard. Um, when everyone's excited about the things that are, you know, being discussed here. So it, it's just like I wanted to get in a few things, and I kept clicking my mic, and, you know, Nathan was talking just a few minutes ago, and I thought he was done, and I'd click my mic to talk, and just about the time I was going to talk, he kept going, and then I clicked off. I must have done it six times. because I, me all the time. I'm just trying to time him. I'm just my trying bad. to time him. It's, it's, it's no, totally no, my it's fault. not I, bad. I like no, to no, make no. the I like to make the explanation several times in many instances because, like you say, it's an educational show, and you want to keep the subject on track. And once the point's actually getting made, you want to reiterate the point. You want to tell people what the point's going to be before the point's made. You know, you want to summarise it after you've made the point. You want to make everything nice and clear. And sometimes that takes m more time than it should. Now, in terms of what makes a good YouTube video, they describe the complete opposite. Don't repeat yourself. Just make your point once. Keep it concise. And yeah, in an edited video, that's absolutely the case. But when you're on a live show, you don't necessarily know whether the rest of the audience has actually understood the point. They definitely haven't. That's why the pre-show started the way it was. I was watching 24-7 going, these guys, they're winning the points because they've heard each argument point individually and got why it wins for a flat earth rather than a globe earth argument. But they haven't recognised the overriding deception that's happening when the description comes from the bullet or the plane or the projectile basically you know they, they've got to rein that in and you know as much as we try and ar make the Coriolis argument as consistent and as concise in terms of the debunking of it it's still very convoluted that's going to take a long time you know and in my mind that brings us back onto the kind of controlled release you know it's it's been scrambled eggs for a long time so unscrambling scrambled eggs is going to take quite a while and while that's happening, best to keep everybody on the heliocentric paradigm as it fades. You know, that's how I perceive the current situation. How did you trans? How did you transition to that? From my point, that was pretty clever. <laughs> <laughs> this has been going on for a while. Before. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. I, just so um, I get my point across, when Brian and I come in at the same time. Either Brian, mostly uh, because you hear him, he said. Oh, stop it. See, now you see, Nathan proved you haven't learned, Neil. See, stop. It's, it's you're going to pat yourselves on the back. Stop it. See, you're, you're proving Nathan's point. You're almost there. Just hold off a little bit. So, so Brian said just a few minutes ago, Tenth, you go, then I'll go. And this is the thing that it took a little while for all of us. It's like when two people come in, one of them has to say, you go, then I'll go. If that doesn't happen, two people are talking. And I think that's the way that the fix is good. It's like if you come in, when another person comes in, somebody say, you go, I go, it'll be fine. 
This has been going on for a while. So quantum, I, quantum mechanics does, does you know, fuck up hold Einstein, on. basically, isn't it? Hold on. A guy came on. This is when I was just a listener and suggested that people say over when they're done. <laughs> yeah, I, that. Was... <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, that's yeah, but over. you don't need to say over when you just see natural politeness from Brian to me when we both yeah. came on. <laughs> Anything. Nathan, can you just remind me if he hasn't learned yet? Uh, yeah. Quantum mechanics. I have learned because, hold on. I'm in the middle of my statement, Neil. And I haven't heard. <laughs> this, this, uh, guys, guys, stop a second, Neil. Just stop one second. This bit right now, the I'm in the middle of my statement. Well, I just want to make my point. Well, yeah, but I'm nearly at the end of my point. Yeah, but I will only take two seconds with my interjection. That can go on for three minutes. Yeah, Please but no. if Neil would just learn and say, okay, you go, then I'll say my piece. But he didn't. Okay. I Neil, heard that. Was, you, you're right. It was very, very rude of Tenth Man to interrupt the beginning of your statement, Neil. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you're just, supposed to hear that. I'm, I've been working, so I haven't been even participating. And then when I go to, I get shut down. But that doesn't, that's not an excuse. Maybe you should be working and listening. And then all of a sudden, because you haven't been talking, you're going to interrupt no, people. No, I am working and listening. I'm just Don't, don't feel bad. I, I was gone for a few days. I came I back to it. A... Can I just point out that the only person that wants to get this conversation back on track at the moment is Tommy. Can I just point that out? Exactly my point. So quantum mechanics versus, uh, you know, Einstein is a completely, um, it's a pretty, it's a complete shot out for who this interest in. And I find that a fascinating point because since I've come across the information on, um, on the internet about, oh, when I was learning about quantum mechanics, I go, oh, quantum mechanics, and it doesn't fit with Einstein, but you know, we, we're still working on it basically. It's like accepted, even though it contradicts it. It's like, and, and that's been put, so already subconsciously programmed in me when I was a global looking into to quantum mechanics. I remember watching them videos. So I watch all my interv all my stuff that I've learned, and I've got a diploma and stuff. I've got, I do know quite a lot of information. I've got like a decent education, and as I've looked into this stuff my whole life, I've been fascinated about it my whole life since I was a kid. I used to read all the science books. I used to believe as a globe, you know. So, you know, I'm, I'm in a bit of a desperate pursuit, really, to get a definite answer. And I think um, I've lost common point now. I think your point, your point was that it contradicts you Einstein. Shut up that. Oh, That's yeah. right. And then, and then the stuff that contradicts what they're saying about the gravity and stuff, like you know, that that's that's smacking your face. That's them. That's them already planting the seed, and subconsciously letting you know that even though there's something out there that contradicts Einstein's gra fear of, of uh, gravity, you know, this, the displacement displacement of mass causing the bending of warping of space, time causing a downward vector, you know, such as gravity holding on fucking oceans and causing all sorts of things like the moon going away and reflecting on some sort of upwards of mechanics sort of fucking violation of another second law of dynamics with no free sandwiches element thing but there's so much stuff that's going on when you understand it all <laughs> that like you know it's a it, the globe is doing a lot of stuff man doing it's doing too much man doing a lot it's doing a lot of stuff that it's just it's not making sense when you put it all together what globe well yeah what globe huh? well, just out of interest <laughs> who, who thinks this paradigm will be around in 50 years globe heliocentrism <laughs> I mean, no, I mean it probably would, you know. I won't underestimate the stupidity of the general public. There's just there's so many idiots out there, Naif. There's too many. Yeah, it's fair We're point. swarming with zombies. No, no, that's fair They're point. They're all zombies, mate. Normies. It's fucking you don't need quantum mechanics, man. Say again, quantum eraser? You know, you know, yeah, you don't need quantum mechanics for to destroy Einstein. All you need is incoherent third grader. All of it, both special and general relativity, are reification fallacies on nuclear steroids. No, I totally agree, but what I'm saying is even if you consider consensus science, the mainstream has quantum mechanics in it. You know, It's not like this is being hidden, and it is debunking the heliocentric rhetoric, and that's sort of commonly understood amongst quote-unquote scientists, right? So what we're suggesting by that is that there can't be anything other than a, a controlled demolition of heliocentrism because it's failed from the top already. Why does it have to be controlled, Nathan? 
Why does it have to be controlled? Because I think the normie idiots that being described a second ago by Tommy would go slightly bonkers and possibly chaos would descend if people were just told on the TV tomorrow that Earth was flat and they'd been lied to about space. (laughs) No, no, I don't mean that. I don't think they could make that jump. Uh, But let's go back to what you said. They'd lose so much trust in their their normal paradigm. I think you would crush them because they've got so much faith in, like, you know, they've been in space and everything's been told the way that they've been, been taught. And to learn that actually they've been all lied to would send them into a kind of a craze. So it's like probably it's more protective of them to keep the faith going. And it's a bit like I've heard that what's, you know, people, creationists have said that about religious people. They, they're they guilty of that. But really, there's another projection of them, their own sort of, you know, they they, they, yeah, they can't stand the, um, the being disregarded by people. Myself, I've got very thick skin, as you know. Um, I, I can handle being uh Cast it aside. I mean, I was I, I suffered racism when I was a kid. You know, it was referred to as the darkie out of the lot from one of my old okay, friends. Okay, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy like, get back to my point that you interrupted. But uh, I mean, you see, I paused to let you go. Now you're going about dark skin and racism. I mean, come on. I'm just saying so, that just being outcasted is quite. Tommy, that was a clue. Used to, so Ugh. most people don't go leave the globe because they're scared of being Tom, outcasted. Because that's Tommy. what globers do. They. they <laughs> Ban, ban the son of a bitch. No, no, just chill, just chill. <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. No. The, the point that you went wrong was when you launched into your history, your childhood, how you suffered yeah, bullying yeah, yeah, for being sorry. black. That, that was where you went wrong, right? We didn't sorry. need that bit. Up until then, it was okay. Yeah. But basically, well, he did go a point. Globers don't want to be <laughs> ostracized, don't want to be. Oh, out. Tommy. But, but then, but Tommy, then Tommy, got, Tommy, 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 Tommy. It's already gone too far. <laughs> Maybe add more. (laughs) (laughs) Well, as an Italian, Italian, I was was a famous Evan lyric. Oh God, audio chaos! It's hurting my ears. It was a sign that said "No dogs and no." No one loved me because I was Irish. And when I was when I was a kid. <laughs> no, don't don't make light of this, right? I was also believed for being black. Uh, <laughs> listen, there's a, there's a famous what, Eminem lyric, uh, Nathan. It's called uh, um, uh, "My only reaction is an overreaction, which only sets off a chain reaction." <laughs> it's supposed to fit me perfectly. Like my only reaction is an okay, overreaction, stop, stop. which sets off a chain. <laughs> Tommy, <laughs> we're still Go waiting for, for the for the point that you interrupted from tenth to actually get concluded. It's been three minutes. <laughs> Maybe I can reach out to Tommy in this way. Ding, ding, ding. (laughs) Okay, mate. (laughs) Quick, somebody somebody get his gum shield out. Give him a water. Shove the hose in his mouth. (laughs) What are you doing, Tommy? I don't know what to say anymore. I'm in stitches. My stomach hurts. I'm laughing so hard. (laughs) Right. Go go ahead. You can get the last word, 10th. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this. I don't know if I can compose my ding ding ding. I love it. All right, that's excellent. Um, all right, so you're saying controlled release, and I'm saying one lie to cover another lie. So if they've lied from the beginning, then of course, as more information comes out, like let's say DNA from you know Watson and Crick, and you say there's intelligence, there's a code, there's a language. And so this can't just come from scratch. Okay, now they're going to say something else. I just posted an article. Now they say, oh, okay, okay, forget God, but it's aliens that created the us in a petri dish called the universe, and, and we're lab rats in a sense, like that Harvard professor. Okay, so they're just getting lie after lie after lie because the in, initial lie is falling apart. Now you're looking at it as a controlled release from the powers to be, whoever they are, the psychopaths that run the world. And I look at it a bit different, similar, but not the same, is that the whole lie is coming apart and God is sovereign, the creator is sovereign. And so his plan is gonna happen anyway. And we're just seeing the lie fall apart with more lies. And it's it's not as if a controlled release, it's more of a, what do we say now? Because they just found out that lie, was covering that other lie. So they keep lying, 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 and eventually it's going to end up with the truth coming out. So it's, instead of a, de- a controlled release, you're saying it's the deck of cards falling down, basically? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I, I I just see the creator as sovereign, and and as a sovereign creator, he, the 
at least from my biblical viewpoint, is that Satan is falling apart with his plans to deceive mankind, and God's allowing it. With that, I'm going to say another massive, huge, enormous thank you to both Discord and Plus panels for making today's after show possible. Of course, a massive thank you to all of you in either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley Premium streams for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, hitting the PayPal link, and all that good stuff. Also, below this video, you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy. And it's a particular note if you drive an electric vehicle. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I will see you all in the next video.